What's happening, lids? We're here to tell you about our Patreon membership that starts from just three quid a month. It is the biggest Patreon in the UK and the fastest growing Patreon on planet Earth, kids. Dan, why is that? You get early access to the public episode. Pubes get it on Monday. You can get it up to 48 hours early. Um, and on top of that, let me just interrupt you there and say you don't get any adverts on the early access. The YouTube adverts that sort of interrupt the show for the public people. If you watch it via the Patreon app, the adverts aren't there. You get an advert-free early access on top of your bonus episode every single week and all of the specials that we drop one of every single month. Dan, list them. The Ghost Hunt. The Ghost Hunt 2. We've done so many lock-ins and they've got more drunk and more ridiculous and we've got more planned. The we've... roast of Adam and Dan, oh. blind date. This is all part of the Patreon membership. Everyone from three quid to five to ten, even if you sign up for the lowest tier, you get all the bonus content. People get early access to tickets as well. It's the only do... way It's the only way to see us live, basically. Yeah. If you're not a patron, you're not going to get to buy tickets to see us live. Apart from the arena show, which is on sale right now. It's on sale publicly. You can get tickets to gigs and tours. Dot com Friday the 9th of December, we change the UK and worldwide podcast game by throwing the biggest ever podcast party at the Echo Arena. It's not the Echo Arena anymore, it's the MS Bank Arena, but I don't care. I'm old school. Uh, you can get them right now. Tickets are still on sale. Come and join us for the biggest night of this podcast and all of our lives. Do you know who got the best tickets for that? Patreons, because it was on there first. Patreon.com slash have a word pod. Enjoyed the episode, you filthy animals. Go ahead. Wag Wag Leads, you're listening to the funniest podcast in the game with Adam, Dan, Sensei Kal, and Finn. This is the one and only Have a Word. Brought to you by Manscaped.com, the very best in below the belt men's grooming. Go, Ed, get on me. We're back. We public are episode. Back. Oh, hey. we're all together, yeah? Yeah. It's, it's public episode in three weeks where we're all here. Well, I didn't go on all these, so that's why we're all together. Yeah. You've, Good, had, you've had a pretty nice you, holiday. 145 grand holiday. I think it came out to 140 overall. Yeah, yeah, but you didn't have to pay VAT. So that's all. Yeah, right. it was a yeah, right nice, like. yeah. yeah. You've had your holidays for this year. You're done. I haven't. I'm going to Paris, <laughs> Abu Dhabi, and skiing. No. <laughs> first of all, Paris and Abu Dhabi, they are work trips for our new Whistle for It pod. So oh, they're shit, not holidays. Yeah. They're write offs. Yeah. <laughs> under, right off. Under, they are, though. You're yep. going to do research on MMA? Oh, yes. Mate, if you can do a tax write-off on football kits, you are going to be... They're going to be a massive rebate coming for you, kid. They owe me a million pounds. Fucking Rishi sorting you out, lad. And then um, we're going skiing, aren't we? I'm so excited for skiing, and it's nothing to do with the skiing. Like, I don't care. You know the skiing plan. You're coming. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah, I'm a tentative, yeah. Yeah. I, did, you... I didn't get clearance for a week. Yeah, but you'll be there for New Year. I'm gonna try and come out on the 29th, back on the yeah, second. That's fine. Yeah, it's done me a lot. So of we're gonna that. we're gonna go for just over New Year, and I'm just really excited to be with a load of people that I love and two people that I tolerate for five, six days, just getting drunk in the snow. Who could they be? Find out on next week's Patreon <laughs> exclusive. There's just a couple of people coming who are cunts. Do you know what I mean? But like, <laughs> did you, didn't you organise it? Did you just like there throw them no in there? Cunts is old. Ishan's coming. Oh. Brennan's coming. Just don't name them. They're the nice ones. <laughs> <laughs> so the lids go skiing. Never skied before. I'm snowboarding. Okay, cool. Yeah. Are you snowboarding or skiing? I'm gonna do a bit of both. <laughs> right. That's how you learn, isn't it? You do two things instead of one. That's. I know I want to take the piss, but. If you've never been before, it's pretty good. You might. No, I'm going to have skis on my feet and oh, snowboard on my yeah, hands. Yeah. <laughs> you can't fall over. <laughs> Shh, Fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Catherine wheel. We need lessons first. I think you should go to Boggin. I can't even say it. <laughs> Boggin. Can you, can you do that? I mean, you can kill children. <laughs> That's how that'll go. Could I just sled down the no. mountain? Could I just get like a... Can I just get like a, a, a bin lid and sit in that and what? The options are <laughs> snowboard, yeah. skis, they're the traditionals. Then <clears throat> you can go monoboard, which no one does, which is two skis together on one long board, but you're facing down. They were popular in like the late 80s, early 90s, and they are for exceptional skiers and you look like a dick. You basically have to be a French gigolo to even be allowed to buy one. Just like that, all the way down. Uh, then mini skis, they're for like stunts and whatnot. They're kind of harder, but 
They look kind of fun. They're like ice skates. Yeah. They're but they're about that long. Right. Um, the luge. You could. <laughs> you could do the luge. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, toboggan I suppose you could do toboggan yeah they do that on, on some ski holidays like oh we have a nighttime thing where they light up the slopes and then you have like toboggan in but it's so fucking dangerous because you basically can't stop you're just a missile aren't you uh, that sounds fun though and I get to sit down sometimes they do inflatables on the slopes on those night ones they basically fucking have like elite. blown up ding like rings and they let you go down like the ones you'd go in a pool with on holiday so yeah I could just go down a mountain on a big fucking giraffe <laughs> Is that a fucking unicorn? <laughs> uh, honestly. The, oh, God. Watching you come down a mountain on an inflatable unicorn, I think my, I think I'd be complete. Like, you know when you're like, and I'm done. I've seen everything there is to be seen. Oh, I'm just so excited. Like, I don't think I'm ever happier than when I'm in a group of me mates having a laugh, just doing anything. Do you know I got a bit of anxiety with the rugby league special? Because it was my idea to go to watch rugby and it was my idea to go to Lorette de Mar and all along even though you guys had agreed to it but particularly you you'd been like yeah all right, yeah, all right. and I always feel like oh, I don't know if Adam's into this there was a point on that Saturday afternoon where it was so nice watching how fucking content you were and it was the opposite of the anxiety like in the build-up and be like is Adam gonna get there and be like oh, I can't be asked." you on the Saturday you were just like several times you kept going Fucking having a fucking great time. <laughs> Just sat, sat. Carl, Carl had moved his sun lounger to face us. Absolute maverick. Like there's people on the beach going, "Who is that guy? Who the fuck is that guy? <laughs> is he wearing black socks on a beach?" Absolute maverick. For ten seconds, he, maybe. Yeah, and the picture was taken. He faced. He faced us, which made so much sense. I've just never seen anyone do it <laughs> in the history of beaches. I do. I do. I do stuff like that. Um, and you were just so happy, and it was basically because you've got mates you just sat there. We had, you know... Like, several of your pot. friends. A little bit of Mary Jane. Beer. Pot. pot. What more do you want? Paraglider. By the way, that wasn't pot. That was like... B b that was like... It was a blunt one, eh? Was it, though? It was a bit of crack. It was, was it, a bit, though? It wasn't it was very pot. sharp, blunt. Hybrid. You were just so happy. Yeah. It was pot and Could you go anywhere and, like... Could you... I mean, is there a point where you're like, you know... You're at Auschwitz doing the tour, but you're like, do you know what? I'm just here with the fucking boys. <laughs> if I'm... <laughs> Love it. If yeah. I was with the boys at Auschwitz and I had like a few like sneaky cans of fucking <laughs> Desperados or a few bottles of Peroni in my bag, I would be having the best time. <laughs> you charge in groups though. What? You charge in groups. Yeah, yeah. I, me? I'm the opposite. I Sorry? train in groups. I, I enjoy it. Oh. I charge on my own. Right. Oh, so I'm, I'm, the more and more, this year, like moving into it, this is the first time, this year is the first time I've ever lived alone, really. Yeah. Like, in the gap between the last two relationships I was in, I sort of lived alone. No, you never. I was there. For, yeah, but <laughs> that's what I mean by sort of. Yeah. This is the first time I've lived alone, and it's, yeah. it gets a bit boring. Right. And I'm so much better with just yeah. people around me. I mean, oh. you've, you've started talking to your flat, so I'd suggest that <laughs> I don't think you charge on your own. I think Do you've you gone mental. Do you charge in groups? Um, honestly, I know it would be satisfying to me for me to be one or the other. But there are times since having a family where as much as I love them, I just want to be anywhere else in the world, potentially on my own. Yeah, so that's that's why I had a holiday on my own. Yeah, so I've away. gone for years doing my own thing, gigging away, driving on my own, traveling on my own. Um, but now when I'm away from family, from you guys, like that's the other thing. I've got very used to this, which I've never had before, which is a gang that I work with. Like the bros. it's fucking amazing. So Twice. genuinely away in Mallorca on day three, I was like, I feel a bit lonely. So I've gone the other way now. I've, I've been a bit institutionalized by the crew and, you know, obviously being at home with the family's great. You need a little bit of a break for it, but I think I need a bit of both. I yeah. would definitely like, so there's trips away that are being offered now, aren't there? Like, oh yeah, you could go to Dubai and it's like a 10 day trip. There's not a chance. I don't want to do that. That's a be away from, from family and you guys. Where trips? A little two, three days away. But, yeah, two or yeah. three, or even like four. But like, it, I'm just so much better. I, it, nothing makes me happier than being with me, mate. I don't even need to be talking. You just can all be having a conversation on your own. I just need to be there with me. I was like, <laughs> Also, what's nice about getting older is, I remember having gangs of mates when we were like doing A-levels and we got to uni and we were just like a fucking herd. 
we did everything together. Which yeah. it was like part of being that age. We we're like, oh, of course you're all going there. You're all going there. Now you're older. You're like, do you know what? We're here together, but I fancy just going and have a fucking little, little wander on my own. Oh, like you're, yeah. you're old enough to go. You know what? I you like a that. break from groups as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. It's just the constant solitude that does me head in. But like I don't we were talking about this in a, in a slightly different context yesterday. Like there's. A, a, a lad that we know who we went to school with essentially who is in a relationship and he's constantly trying to just not be in the house he's just trying to not do the relationship because he it, the grass is always green and sort of thing mm. and i've been in relationships like that where i've been like i wish i was single because it would be so much better than being stuck here because it look, look at all these single people having the best time and then once you're on your own and you're single you're like actually that looks quite good over there where those that couple are yeah having a nice time the grass always looks greener and if you're in a big group of all your mates, I am really content. But after a couple of days, I'm like, I am going for a walk and I don't want to speak to any of you. Yeah, that's, he- that's, that's healthy, isn't it? I mean, the, the best relationships are the one where you get all of that contentment at home. You've got a mate, you've got a pal, you've got a partner. And you occasionally see a prostitute a few and times And then you year. also go and see a prostitute. Yeah, you need to you know, that. But locally, like the one that lives down the road, like, hello. I like, a, you know, I like making a saving on a prostitute. I don't know Is if you know Mark that. Is that Mark Morrison? Hello. <laughs> Return of your dick. Yeah. <laughs> I just think you need a sound partner who is like, <laughs> you need to get who with somebody. lets you go and hang out and sometimes, you know. But you also need so mean to God, I together. fucking hate watching shit relationships. You're like, guys, just fucking leave each other alone. It's but horrible. you need to have your own. So me and Seneca can live together, but we're both, my, my, my brother's much older than me, so I'm essentially an only child. He's 62, isn't he? He's 62, yeah. yeah. 62. He's not 62. He's the same age as you, Dan. In fact, he's born 62. the same day as you. <laughs> he's got as many hairs. Uh, yeah. Hair. Um, not that I know you. So we're only we, so situation. we've grown up enjoying our own company, entertaining ourselves. So sometimes in the house, I'll just go away, and she's like, "Yeah, <laughs> go away," because she wants to sit on her phone. Leave and- Carly's charging. <laughs> 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 it's literally like, like she'll go on her phone and she'll put something she wants to watch on. And I'll go and play. Like you need to be able to be on your own and not rely on yeah. people as well. Yeah. Uh, Relationships are dead fucking hard, aren't they? It's dead hard. I find them quite easy, to be honest with you. Mm, yeah. Track what are you, 0 and 6? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, I'm, what are you then? I'm 1 and 12. <laughs> <laughs> 1 and 12. 0 oh and 6 in relationships. Yeah. What an honourable way to describe it. It's so funny. Mate. Ah. Oh, I was, I've was. i sacked the management so many times with our new head coach, all sorts. Hey. Do you not think it's uh, I I forget the comedian who put it this way, um, and they were sort of it was in the build up to a, a routine rather than the punchline. They said uh, it's sad that we view every relationship that doesn't last forever as a failure. Isn't that quite a yeah interesting way to think? Of? Like just because something doesn't last forever doesn't mean it wasn't worthwhile. So I might be zero and six in terms of getting married, having kids, and dying old together, but. I've learned a lot from all six of them, so technically I'm six and oh. No, I mean, that's a phenomenal way of spinning it. But yeah, you are, that is a good point. Yeah. There are some relationships that are definitely in the L's. And friends. Where you're like, you shouldn't have been together, that ended badly, and now you don't like each other. But without those relationships, I'm you'll never end up with, yeah. <laughs> you'll never end up in a good relationship without those getting it wrongs and, uh, and you learning learn by from making it. mistakes, mate. Yeah, you know. It's the way it is. I've had some what? pretty nice exes. I've had some pretty bad ones. I've been a good boyfriend. We've done that. I've been a fucking douche. Me and Selica have learned on the job, though. We've been together that long. We haven't had bad relationships to learn from. So you just learn as you go. And then you go, oh, yeah, that's how you do it. I know. It's, there's no right or wrong way to do it, is there? But no, but I spent a lot of my of 20s wanting to stick my penis loads of different places. Yeah. Like that, you know, and that got a few complaints from girlfriends at the time. <laughs> like, that's one of the fundamentals that I don't want you to. And you're like, I know. But I like it. <laughs> Just to get there and there and there. What do you think? No. What do you reckon is, if you had to say like the three biggest lessons you've learned from your relationships, what would you say they are? <laughs> we spoke about this on the beach yesterday. We went yeah. to the beach, by the way, yesterday, me, Steve and Adam, and I had really deep chats. We did. After, in between We're heads talking of about our love languages. And penalties. On the beach. <laughs> Just us three. What? what? <laughs> Sat around eating hummus. <laughs> Talking Sorry. about love languages. But we were playing heads and bees and taking pens as well to keep it manly. Sorry, talk. <laughs> what the fuck, you little tit? I want to know what you were bitches. at the beach yesterday. We took a samba goal. You're talking about your love languages? Yeah, so mine is like what? 
I want to know what yours is, Dan. <laughs> on the Patreon exclusive, literally, we recorded it two days ago. You were like, I love the smell of pussy juice. <laughs> Possibly, Bush could your nice. love language be? Thing is, I just want intimacy oh, and, and ca- friendship ma- as ma- well as a lover. <laughs> Dab that pussy juice on your neck, girl. Mine and Carl's is very similar. Right. We need, we need affirmation. We need to be told. Do you know what? You're fucking great. Your dick's lovely, and I love it in my ass. Oh, yeah, we need yeah, to be told yeah, yeah. it. Do you like know in, what I mean? in a Christmas card, <laughs> there's five. I can't remember the fifth. There's affirmation. There's um, acts of kindness. There is touching, like being um, tactile. like tactile and stuff. And there is, um, oh, what's the other one? Rimming. Receiving gifts. <laughs> yeah, rimming. Rimming, yeah. yeah. So, like, oh, I want them to buy me things or her to buy me things. And, like, you, that's how you feel. They want one of them. But it isn't necessarily as bad as you think. <laughs> She's taking some fucking little sneaky shots, isn't she? <laughs> is there, what's the fifth one? I, I couldn't give a flying fuck about gifts. Quality time is the other one. So, like, oh, let's go, we don't go out enough. We don't date enough. Yeah. What's oh, yours? hundred percent. Yours is quality time. Do you know, Adam Bloom, who's a brilliant comedian, told me he was coming out of a separation from the, the mum of his kids. And I, I just found out we were going to be parents and he'd seen that we'd, I'd posted it. And Adam Bloom is a guy that I've known since I started. Never known him that well and everything, but he's always someone that I've respected. And I think he's respected me as a comic. And he just went, mate, make sure that when you got kids and everything you make time to still be a couple with your missus. Don't just be parents. Yeah. Don't get time on your own and then just talk about being parents constantly because it can take over. You've still got to be a couple. That is one of the hardest things when you have kids to still go, oh, should you and me go and have a date and go and have some food and talk about stuff that we like? Like not treating someone like a another member of staff in the raising your family fucking company. So do you think that's yours like that. then? Quality time. That's something me and Laura have been trying for. No, but is definitely. that is that what you is that what you want though? Is that how is that you, you feel? Need? That's is that what how you love feel? Oh, what okay. do you right. need? That's very important for a, a marriage with kids. Definitely. So all that's not, I don't know if that's a love language. I totally know what you mean about affirmation. I'm neat. I love being liked. It's insecure. I yeah. love yeah. being liked. Yeah, all the same. You just need to be told every now and then. Hey, I'm into this. You know. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's exactly me. So I. I'm yeah, like that's it, isn't it? Yeah. It's, and then, and then I'm like, okay, it's cool. so simple. Just, yeah. hey, by the way, everything going on here, I like it. And yeah. you, and you're funny. And oh my God, the way you kiss my bum hole yeah. makes me have butterflies. <laughs> oh, and then there's a sixth, there's a sixth one. Um, Can you imagine if a girl kisses your bum hole? You went, ooh, giving me butterflies there, girl. <laughs> bum hole affirmation is the sixth one. So <laughs> I'm bad for wanting to be liked by everyone. And sometimes I think that's a bit of a failing of mine. Because, like, I watch you particularly, Carl, a little bit. No, that's my biggest flaw. What since, are people since hanging around with you guys, there's been loads more times where I've been like, hey, fuck off. Like, mm. I can feel it. I am 25% more Scouse, and I'm not just talking about me fucking Luciano. Yeah, Luciano, <laughs> lads, shout out Luciano. <laughs> Wearing me Scouse trainees today, lads. I, hanging out with you and just what, sometimes I, I watch how you deal with stuff, and I'm like, could have maybe done that with a bit more diplomacy. But it's definitely a failing of mine that I need to be liked. Some cunts you don't need to be liked by. Yeah, who, you don't. who are they? Fuck them. You don't like but everybody. I've, I definitely it, take on a little bit of that from but you. But here's is, the thing, no. I, I used to be exactly what you're describing. I used to really, really, really worry whether everyone liked me. And I realised when I was trying to be someone everyone liked, you end up being someone that everyone just thinks is fine. And, and in your comedy as well. Yeah, so in the end, you go, no, I'm just going to be me. And the people who like me will like me. And the other people are like, who the fuck are you? You can be like, well, who the fuck are you? There's a few, me a few bits in this tour show. Yeah. There's a few that's bits what in I this need tour to feel show. Loved. There's a few bits in this tour show that I would never have, uh, have had in an Edinburgh show or a, or a circuit set because I was tr- trying to be good to everyone. And you end up being good, but never brilliant. Like you, yeah. you lose your brilliance because you're just trying to be fucking <laughs> seven, eight out of 10. You never get that nine out of 10. Mo- I've, I've got a few moments in this tour show where I'm like, <laughs> that's out of order and I like it. And it's good. <laughs> it's a fucking good. Those moments are important. In a relationship, I absolutely, that's why I've never, you know, when you're like, oh, my, my wife, you know, met her and she just wasn't interested. And I just kept asking and then kept asking. Oh, I and I just right kept there. asking. And she was like, no, you're a fat, ugly cunt. And I was like, oh, I'm going to get you one day. And then I drugged her. And then it's fine. No, I can't do it. That yeah, whole, I, like, I need a girl to I, like, you know what? I've whatever. had 
obviously slightly less on the nose conversations with people where I'm like, oh, I'd rather just meet. Like, just like friends of friends I've met and they're like, oh, well, I was fucking chasing her for like a year. I kept asking her out and she was like, nah, nah. She was seeing other lads and I was always just like, hey. And in the end, we just went out and it's been three years now. And as you can see, we are very, very, you know, mediocre with each other. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. like, that's just so a- basically, uh, she wasn't keen and I ground her down. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and a lot of people ask, ask her, what do you see in uh, Graham? And I say, I ah, tell you what, just persistence. <laughs> you know, he's got an engine on him. <laughs> if I ask someone three times and suddenly they say, no, I go, okay, fuck off then. I'll be like, let's keep going until you say yes. Because then they don't want it, do they? Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is a conversation I've had with like exes before where... It's like I don't, I don't want you to do that. I want you to want to do that. Do you know what I mean? Oh, that's a that's a girl's on. cliche, but it's Laura, true. Do you, do you know what I mean? Laura, are you listening? How many times do I have to have a rim job? Come on. What do you know? I want you to want to snuff up for truffles. <laughs> do you know what it is? <laughs> it's the it's the, the text back saying you can come if you want. Oh my god! That, if you send that text, I hope you die of AIDS. Come if you want. You, that means you don't want me there. Yeah. Because you should say, oh yeah, do you want to come? Because it'd be great. I'll come if you want. Yeah. So yeah. That's, the, that's the equivalent of that, isn't it? Definitely what I've... I fucked around a lot when I was younger. When I started dating in my 30s, it was... You could... There was a different tone where you're just like, everyone's been in relationships. If you're single in your 30s, you're more than likely to have been in relationships. And there was... It's just a... Maybe it's sometimes got a bit sort of bleak. Like, what are you? What are you into? Like, you'd be way too quickly going. What's this about? What are you looking for? Because fucking yeah, t- yeah. time's ticking. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. A, it was something easy. I fucked around in my twenties. I wasted people's times. I didn't know what I wanted. It was definitely easy. Like Laura turned up and she'd basically been in one absolute slow car crash of a relationship, and she'd been single a while, and she just wanted someone who she liked, who treated her properly, and. And I'd been fucked around so much and I'd messed around and I basically, it was a beautiful woman who clearly thought what? I was great. What? You were a beautiful woman. <laughs> there was a beautiful woman oh. who thought I was great. This is literally my routine, and I just isn't it? was like- This I was is like, the punching routine. It's like women go through bad relationships and it's it, like I've made oh, it- Oh, I've ab- quoted that to her, the visual compromise. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she's like, no. I'm like, babe, babe, I- come on. <laughs> but men do the same thing. I made it about women because it's easier within the context of that routine. People go through shit relationships and then they just end up going, right, actually, that's not as important to me anymore. It's, I, I'd need this. And you figure out, I've been, in, in the relationships I've had, I've been a decent boyfriend, an awful boyfriend, and then tried to be a pretty good one. And you slowly just get better. You shake off like the toxic shit you're doing and what's really annoying is when you've worked on yourself and you're like do you know what i know how to be a partner here and then you start seeing someone who has got absolutely no yeah, idea totally. how to yeah, do yeah. That. and you're like i've been you and now yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's because yeah. i'm seeing what i've been before also partner's the key word you know i know that's overdone like who i watch these couples and they're like yeah it's just i'm waiting for him to ask me to marry you know i just don't know when that's happening we've been together nine years and you know, we don't talk about it and I'm just waiting. You're like, what the fuck? I've dropped in for it's a year. It's your life. Uh-huh. It's your life. You need to discuss what you want and where you're going. I get that you want a proposal that comes out of nowhere, but like all the paperwork should be fucking on the table before that. Like in everything, buying houses and stuff, being a partner, be like discussing stuff as mates. I know you need to be romantic and... And, and and tactile and all of that stuff. But you need to discuss everything. Me and Laura mm. have a state of the union every fucking couple of weeks where we go, what's going on? Where are we going? What are we up to? What's the next big thing? How are you doing? How do you feel about that? Like we discuss everything. So here's the thing now, you're married now. And just to go back to like the proposal coming out of nowhere sort of thing, I've already thought about that. So for when I start seeing, if I got to the point I'm seeing someone and I want them to marry me, I would want my proposal to be a total... I wouldn't want them to be like, oh, it's coming. So I would probably just be an arsehole for a month and make them think I'm yeah, about to dump them. They love and that. Then, they love that. Then propose. Especially women in their 30s. They love that. Well, you know that, that happens anyway? Fuck me about, and then it's a nice surprise. That's what, that's what women actually want. They do. They never say it, they but they do. do. They, they want to be surprised. Do. That happens do. anyway. Do you like the two weeks leading up to Fuck a proposal? Fuck someone else yeah. and then ask it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. No, you no, no, no. cheated on me. No, 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 no. That's too that's far. Women don't like being cheated on. Oh, Fact. No. Okay. The two weeks I'm leading up to a proposal, well. 
you're like oh anxious and acting differently and being secretive with your phone because you've maybe got pictures of your friends or whatever. Pictures with the ring on. No, but like you sent it to your mate. Yeah, like I've nice. got it. Look, it's this. And then you're secretive, and then they're in their head, it's a common thing. Like, is he cheating on me? So yeah. that's common anyway. But imagine how happy they are when they find out that you're not, and you, you just go look through my phone. I've just uh, been sending the ring to everyone. No, go like this. Go. Ah! Like you're gonna <laughs> smack them in the face, and they go, "Hey, <laughs> you thought you were gonna get fucking <laughs> abused? You're not." But that would engaged. be such elation. Yeah, right. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Do it Bro, on the first I tell you what would be great. A lot of Here's a really good thing. Right? Talk it Break through. really bad news that isn't actually true to them. Tell them. Oh, listen. Right, I don't know how to tell you this, but... I've got bowel cancer. No, your mum's died. <laughs> your mum's died. Oh, right. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then when they're crying, like, oh, I'm going to miss <laughs> my mum. Right? Get your mum to walk in. <laughs> Wait. You propose. And they're like, oh, my God, yeah. Like, I've just lost someone who I consider, like, really important to my life, and you're going to be mine forever. And then they get happy with that. And then their mum comes in with their whole family because you've set up, like, a surprise engagement party. And you're like, hey, your mum's not dead either. Hey! So they get engaged <laughs> and their mum back within the space of five minutes. Yeah. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure they would appreciate this. You know people though, Adam. After. That's the thing. I know women. So, so you know women. I can't get me a drum, man. <laughs> <laughs> What's he thinking? <laughs> Your mum's dead. <laughs> oh my god! Stop, stop crying! Stop crying! Stop crying! Shh, 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 shh. You're ruining it! You're ruining it! You're ruining it! Stop crying! Stop crying! Look. <laughs> Look, and who's through that door? It's your fucking mum. See? Got ya. Got ya. Got ya. How cute you look. In all, in all look. truth, though, she does have bowel cancer. <laughs> not as. Yeah, she's not dead yet. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Merry Christmas. <laughs> so oh. that's relationships, isn't it? Yeah. And you're welcome. You're welcome. Hey, You've, yeah. If you're not, if you men that. listen and learn, if you women, yeah, men do talk about that shit. So shut up. Yeah, yeah. love. We had a lovely love conversation language. yesterday. Love language. So yeah, well, it's important to know yourself and know what you need. And see, my love language is affirmation, but I, I give back in terms of acts of kindness. So that's exactly me. I do stuff for people. If people need stuff doing, I'll do it. Emails. He does it. No, because that's not the same thing. Oh. That's, that's work. Also, what fucked up relationship would be... What I'm looking for, Adam, is admin. Really good admin. But, you know, like, even with me mates, like, for example, if you... And you're the same as this. Like, last week, I needed a lift to the airport. No benefit to his life to give me a lift to the airport. Not even a question. Yeah, I'll get up early in the morning and I'll take you to the airport. Yeah, he's a fucking... What, Gibraltar over? He's a rock. Of course he is. Yeah. That's a really good reference, that. Are you... Are you the... Are you the... Are yeah. You, are you, is he there for you as much as you're there for him? 60-40. I don't ask for many. I don't ask people he, for he much. He knows he, he doesn't ask for much, to be honest with you, but he knows if he ever asks the answers, yeah. I yeah. know. Oh, you too. It's cute. It's important. Your, What's Laura's, though? Your what? best friend, love language. How does Laura take her? What? <laughs> How does Laura take her? Love. Quarterly. <laughs> <laughs> But I just, I can't get my head around people who don't do stuff for other people. Like, if you've got the ability to do stuff, something for someone that they need doing, and you can do it, and it's not a massive infringement on your life, I really don't know why people wouldn't do it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's be a good shit, innit? Mm. I have to say, though, I am busier these days. This, yeah, I so you busier, haven't got the ability to? And I know, I, I, like, I've got a couple of friends that are going through stuff at the moment, and you can tell they need a hand, and you're like, I can't sacrifice, like, I... I haven't got a hand to give myself at the moment with there's low <laughs> is that a wanking joke that you just laughed at me? <laughs> so I, I have to be a bit firmer there now to just be like, mate, I've got, we're running a business. I've got a tour. I've got a family. I can't just come and do your thing, but I know what you mean. My, yeah, but my, yeah. I'm, For your absolute bezos, I suppose. When, yeah. when, you, when you can't do it, that's yeah, different. Yeah, okay, yeah, but yeah. like my natural instincts, if any of my, especially my close friends or family are like, I've got this problem. My immediate instinct is, how do I solve it or help them solve it? Yeah. Or just do something. Like recently, a mate's man, uh, their, their grandparent was dying and they were just having a really awful time. And I was just like, right, what do I, what do, I do here? Will you marry me? Oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Take yeah. the edge off. <laughs> Propose to them. They love it. Genuinely, 
I would not be surprised Jordan, if in the next Johnny. couple of months you ended up in a really you're in a you're in a much better place now. Oh, I'm in a much better place. I'm yeah. in a really good place. To yeah, be honest yeah, with you. yeah, yeah. Um, but the other, that person's grandparent, some grandparent was dying, and they were like, "Honestly, if I need anything, I will message you." But uh, yeah, my family and I, I replied. It was like nine o'clock in the morning. I was like, "Do you want a Mackey's breakfast?" <laughs> Did he say yeah? Nothing. They were like, we've literally just left. I mean, I'd say yeah. I was like, do you want a Mackey's breakfast? Like, I'm going to be driving past yours in a minute and there's a Mackey's on the way. I can just get you to Mackey's breakfast. Because in my head, it's just like, <laughs> your granddad's dying. You want a sausage and egg McMuffin. <laughs> <laughs> like, it'll, make it, it'll make you feel better. Yeah, I'm sorry for your loss. Pancakes? <laughs> Saying that, it's a car screech. I don't rate Mackey's breakfast. <laughs> I don't <coughs> rate I don't rate Mackey's breakfast. Have you got a Tim Hortons in Liverpool yet? <laughs> um the Canadian they're like a, no. uh, there's one by the there's one by IKEA. I they're a that. rival to I think McDonald's. Oh, I thought it was a coffee shop. Yeah, they do all sorts they do loads of food, loads of breakfast options, donuts. It's, it's as well. known for its coffee, but it is like a it's a cafe. Oh right. It's, it's like a, a diner. It, it's a North American style. Is it good fast food breakfast? Uh, I don't think I don't think McDonald's is at all. Yeah, but what's the old turn? What this is what I mean. Tim Hortons is in Chester. They've opened up right next to Mackey D's. The old Pizza Hut's gone, and they've replaced it with a Tim Hortons. So we're like, oh, maybe yeah, we'll we try Tim Hortons. Yeah, we like, Chester. Won't use both. Not even in the same fucking league. Not good enough. And, and so I get it with Mackey D's. You're like, yeah, what? What? I, I have a bacon sandwich and some hash browns. Etta loves pancakes. But you're like, even if you don't think it's that great. What's the alternative? And Mackey's bacon There's sandwich no one is competing. bad. It's really bad. Like, the best bacon sandwich I've found in Liverpool is Bold Street Coffee. I go there maybe once or twice a yeah, week when I'm at home. Yeah, but you, can't do it, you can't do it in a car with your kids no, in the no, back totally. the drive through. But like, Mackey's breakfast is good for... The, the, the muffins are good. The sausage... You have to get the sausage because the bacon's not great. The sausage is quite unique because it's a circle. You can't really get that much over here. The sausage and egg McMuffin or the bagel... I'm going to I'm going to just tell you is is the good. eggs a bit plastic. Yeah, I know, but it's that you're not just buying it for the breakfast, you're buying it for the how accessible it is, yeah. how uniform it is around the fucking country and it's you can drive in, I don't know. Maybe we should open one. Yes, that's I knew that's where this conversation was going. The Have a Word Breakfast Cafe. That's what yeah, telling, telling you, you right now you just cool. described my dream. Cool. Yeah. And we, in the week. I'd love to be a head chef. You is know? your mum <laughs> or nana dying of bowel cancer or have, have they died of bowel cancer? We're open from six. Come cry with us. That'll be the advert. I'm yeah. loving it. Uh, she's dead. That's taken. Uh, is it? Yeah. yeah. It's Mackie's though. It's oh, bowel right. cancer. Really famous. Um, it's, it's, it's cancer. It's terminal. It, oh, yes! <laughs> it's terminal. I'm going to have one at the airport. Thank you. <laughs> Your nan's dead, but you're going to Ibiza and here's some sausages. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, no. Oh, banana. Bom, 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 bom. <laughs> Two days later on pills. <laughs> oh, Lord. Do you have a break? Yeah. Hello, guys. We want to talk to you about Manscaped.com. It is the smooth sack summer with Manscaped.com, the very best in below-the-belt men's grooming. I absolutely love Manscaped.com. In fact, I am a Have A Word customer of Manscaped.com. I use the code WORD20 to get all my products, not least because I like clean, shaved balls, but crucially, because I'm from a Muslim background, all Muslims must shave their pubes. Wow, and I'm sick of saying that, you know? I've been saying it on every advert record we've done so far, <laughs> but it, it sounds better from you. Um, we use the uh, Lawnmower 4.0 at home. It's a, I say we, it's just me and Laura. <laughs> it is the family pube trimmer. It's an excellent bit of kit. So Manscaped are calling it the Smooth Sack Summer. Get your pube situation, all of it sorted out, just like my friend Ishan Akbar. Manscaped.com, use the code WORD20 for 20% all, 20 off all products and free shipping. And you can shave off about 100% of your pubes. You don't want any smelly pubes. Stop it. You don't want to be sniffing your pubes. Just, that's it. All right, nice one. Okay, mate. We're go, back. Go podcast, No mate. fucking around, mate. Go to uh, the merch, haveawordpod.com for a new t-shirt. Have a word, mate. Hello, mate. Hello, mate. Yeah, we've got... Um, designer t-shirts. Designer. 
It looks like a designer. It looks like a proper St. John's marker. Oh, I haven't seen Armani it. Yet. Top. I'm going to look at it in the game. If you enjoy Adam's Hello Mate Turkish Dublin character, oh, yeah. you can buy the merch. Get to our merch site. Picture here, because yeah. Finn's put it in. Picture here. And here's a picture of and Judith look. Chalmers. And here's Judith Chalmers. If you want Judith Chalmers merch, <laughs> you're on the wrong pod. There better um, be a picture of Judith Chalmers. Um, shall we do... Shall we do some correspondence from our wonderful fans? Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for They're not emailing all wonderful. In. We're not doing Sexy Corner, are we? You only get that on Patreon, don't you? Dot com slash half okay, pod. Cool. Is that true? I haven't, I haven't got any Sexy Corner. Okay, patreon.com right. slash half pod. Sexy Corner. Uh, Kapil Pow. <laughs> There's untight. Kapil Pow! Every time we... Say, oh. it does sound like the capital of an African country, doesn't it? Capel Powell. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah, a runner. He's yeah. all a runner. And Capel Powell wins the London Marathon 2025. What a horse. Capel Powell wins the Grand Aintree National. Race Course Grand National. <laughs> the Aintree Race Course Grand National. <laughs> That's who it's sponsored by now. 2025. They sponsor their yeah. own race. Yeah. Capel Powell. And it's won by a woman and it's a white horse. Very rare. Cool. What's the question? Um, <laughs> he's dead sound, by the way, Kapil Pau. Is that his real name? Yeah. Kapil. Yeah. Pau. Mr. Pau. Yeah. Do you know... It's he, actually short for capable poo. Poo. Pau's not shorter than poo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know you've had a really bad poo when you're mispronouncing poo. <laughs> you're all right. You look stressed out. I'm like a Pau. Uh, the Kapil Pau. It's Michael Caine, isn't it? Hi, couple. How you doing, mate? You're right. I've met him. He's dead, so. He's dead, so. Every time... So Michael Caine says poo. Then for a pow. That's Christopher Walken. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking brilliant, Michael Caine. <laughs> this pow is your book, right? <laughs> up, up his ass. <laughs> Bit of hell. Bit of hell. Don't do Al Pacino. Just move on to the question no, quickly. Let him do it. There. Let him say couple <sighs> pow. Just a pow like a chimpanzee. <laughs> Three grand of shit. <laughs> Chimpanzee and half. Michael. So, Capel Powell must enjoy us doing the name thing because he keeps writing in. So, it's his fault. <laughs> Capel Powell says, Evening, boys. If Have a Word was a religion, what would the mil- uh, what would the major holidays be uh, and why? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I, I'm keeping Christmas, me. I like it. What are we calling it, though? Can I just keep the Christian holidays? Quite good, yeah, I think. Yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll just keep the ones we've got. Kapel. Well, we're not Are you even oh, a Christian? Can we change Ash Wednesday to Ass Wednesday? <laughs> <laughs> Someone rubs a bit of pussy on your face. Or ass. Yeah. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Weird, In weird church. <laughs> you can queue up and you like... But what would you do on Pussy Tuesday? What? If <laughs> Ass Wednesday... It's Pancake Tuesday, isn't it? That's where you get a most both from a woman with no tits. That's flat ass, isn't it? <laughs> Good Friday. <laughs> That's the saddest motorboat ever. You're like, I don't think you really want me to do this, love. Please. <laughs> I really want you to motorboat me. Um, Monday. Um, what is it? Monday, Tuesday. Um, oh. What major events in Have a Word would you box off as holidays? I mean... 9th of December. Yeah. Probably the biggest day ever we're going to have. It will be. You'd, you'd have that. We'd just move Christmas to the day after the, li- no. the first live show. No, it's actually Christmas Eve, the live yeah. show. Right. So but Christmas is now December 10th. Yeah. yeah. And we'll have... Move it forward two weeks. But it's not Christ. Who's our Christ? Um, Mother Teresa. The Queen. Oh, Teresa Day. Um, <laughs> Capel Pau. <laughs> Can we do like a reverse... <laughs> Can we do like a reverse Ramadan? Whoa. Where we just eat as much as we want for the month. <laughs> no, in the daylight. <laughs> Call it Aviscan. Mate. <laughs> Excited for Avascan, lad. Adam's not playing very well. Ah, it's Avascan, isn't it? <laughs> Doesn't score many Jordan no. Avascan. <laughs> he, only, he only fasts when he's asleep. <laughs> <laughs> but he's pretty good at it, to be fair. Mate, I've been doing Avascan for about three years. Avascan would be a fucking great month. Can you get some religious holidays up, please, Finley? Of any religion, because, you know, we don't stick to one here. Yom Kippur. Is that the Jewish Sh- one? Just pull one out of my ass. Don't pull that out your ass. 
What's Hanukkah? What do they do for that? Like I know they light a few candles and that, and, in they, and around, they, they, they go like trick or treating. They spin the dreidel, don't they? It's in and around Christmas. I heard they spin the dreidel. They go trick or treating, and they, they spin the thing, and they light a few candles. That's Judaism, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and an armadillo there. I think. They do it around Christmas, and they're like, oh, soz. Soz about Jesus. Uh, there's Sukkot. That's quite easy, isn't it? Suck it. That's just blowjob day. What's Yom Kippur? He just said that. What is it? It sounds like a starter. <laughs> it sounds... I'll have the uh, Yom Kippur to start. It sounds brummy, doesn't it? <laughs> it sounds like nice fish. Yom Kippur? <laughs> um, it didn't sound brummy at it's all. It's a long, fast, confession-intensive prayer day at the synagogue. I love the word synagogue. So, Kapil, I know what you were doing with the question, but we've taken it in a different direction. What we're doing is taking already existing major religious <laughs> holidays and just being knobheads about them. <laughs> what you meant was, what are the big significant <laughs> things? What's Kwanzaa? <laughs> Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa. Come on, you know what Kwanzaa is? I, I fucking do not. Do you all go on Kawasaki's? It's Kawasaki Tuesday. Fuck off. Why don't we do that? Kwanzaa. I've heard the word before. Uh, it's Southeast African. Um, usually on the 6th day of January. No, sorry. The sixth day leading... Oh, it's the first of January. It's just New Year's Eve day. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> it's a... I know what it is. Sixth day... I, uh, hey. <laughs> it's an African. Oh, Lent. Lent. Yeah. What, it's called Lend. What? It's called Lend. You just give people stuff. Or bent. <laughs> you just try being gay for a month. It's pride. Yeah. yeah. You, you go without... You go without <laughs> pussy for a whole month. Do you know, I, I'm surprised <laughs> that, you know, the term straight, as in, like, I'm straight because I love vagina and not cock, right? It's not been cancelled. Or yeah. if you love cock I think it's quite offensive to the gays. Because bent is offensive, isn't it? Because it, the idea is, because I used to think... Straight and bent. Bender. Yeah, I used to think <laughs> bent was, like, because they bend over. <laughs> right? I genuinely thought that for a long time. The but, missionaries all like... But it's not. The idea is that straight people are normal, straight, and gay people are wrong, as in they're bent. Yeah. Like, not good. So I don't know why straight is yeah, like... What's the, the alternative to straight? What? Hetero. Yeah. But, like, straight is offensive, isn't it? If you think Str about straight it like that. Straight is a used... It is a universal term, isn't it, for heterosexual? Yeah. Cis. I don't think it's fair. What does cis stand for again? What? Cis. CIS, what's that? Cisgendered. I don't know what it stands for, but it basically means the, the gender you were born as, doesn't it? Oh, does it? Yeah. All oh, right. Maybe I've got that wrong then. Um, yeah. No, I see what you mean. Yeah. God, you're always fighting for the gays, aren't you? Yeah. You're so good. I'm with them. I don't know if Finn keeps showing us closing this thing, though. But, um, <laughs> Pasha. It's not a fucking. It's an Ibiza, yeah. <laughs> it's nice an Ibiza, isn't it? Yeah. Club in Benador. Passover. What did it do there? It sounds tasty. Passover's food, isn't it? I'm pretty sure it's food. It's a, yeah, I knew it sounded tasty. It is. It's past that. It's past that over. They have a big buffy and it's like pasta potatoes, gives the yams. Pass yeah. over. Yams. Um, <laughs> it's a major Jewish holiday that celebrates the exodus of the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. You have a Nissan. Passover. Is it? Is that the end of slavery? Is that when Moses walked them through the? Yeah. It's when Let Moses, my Moses people took all the go. Jews to the Chinese buffet. He's like, come on. <laughs> Pass that over. He's like, come on. No, I've booked the old place. <laughs> How many Jews did he save? Oh. That's a Google. I'd, I'd say well into the hundreds. 10,000. did Moses save? He went to the... 600,000. That's 600, a big gaff. Oh, that's a big, that's a big buffet. 40 years it took him now. What are you up? <laughs> He went to Pharaoh, he's like, lad, you can't be fucking using them as slaves anymore. And Pharaoh was like, I fucking can, mate. Is that real? <laughs> and Moses was like, listen, no, wait, we're going. Wait, we're going to walk. Go on. Wait, let him ask this question. I know Moses wasn't real. Wasn't. What do you mean? What? Moses. What yeah, do you mean? He's in the Bible, isn't he? Why is yeah. he not real? He is real. He didn't fucking split the water like that. How do you know? Because it's not physically possible in our universe, then. Right. Right, okay, so he didn't split the water, so that might have been a metaphor. It wasn't real. There was probably just a drought, and he was like, oh, cool, cool. we were going to have to go round, but we'll just was walk there through six Did he do that? Did that happen? What? The Jews yeah. with the pharaohs? Yeah. You don't think pharaohs are real, do you? <laughs> no, no, they're real. You heard pharaoh? No, I heard Moses, and I know he's... What is your fucking question, Carl? 
I'm just trying to see if it's all real. What? What is your question? Is it real? Right. <laughs> I mean, it's thousands of years ago. It's Old Testament, isn't it? So you're so deeply... a lot of the New Testament's bullshit. So I imagine the Old Testament is even more bullshit. Exactly. But they usually pinned on some sort of historical event, aren't they? Do you reckon there'll ever be a newer testament, like the brand new testament? <laughs> what, like an iPhone update? Yeah. Do you right. reckon there's ever going to be someone again who believes they're like the Son of Christ? But there has been, hasn't there? There has been New Testaments. Romans. Muhammad. That's a New Testament. If you. If you refuse the New Testaments, that's how you get new religions. What about the Because Jesus is a prophet in Islam. So Makes Muhammad perfect. came up and went, ah, guys, I know it's a few hundred years ago. Guess what, though? New set of, there's a new download, there's, you know? And if everyone rejects it, then some people go, no, I'm into that. And off they go, that's Islam. So Joseph Smith with Mormonism, you could argue that that's a New Testament. But if will, you ignore, go on. Will there be a Christian point three? That's what he means. Well, there is. There is. That's what I'm saying. No, but what are, I'm saying. No, but is, Christians would reject it. Right. So then you've got a new religion. But what would have to happen for the Catholics to be like, actually, we'll have that? Oh, yeah. They'd <laughs> definitely blow it all up, wouldn't they? The Catholic Church that makes fucking bank nonces kids and keeps people in poverty, they yeah. definitely want an update because things aren't going fly. swell for them. Jesus can fly. But like, if Jesus came down and, like, you know, could do the stuff that, like, the old Jesus could do. I think the church would call him a a, 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 a fake, what do they call it? A fake pro false prophet. False prophet, yeah. I think the Catholic church is pretty well set up doing exactly the same horrible shit they've been doing what for thousands they, of years. If he came down and was like, oh, here's fucking, here's a bit of tuna for everyone. Have some chips. <laughs> <laughs> tuna and chips? Well, then he's a paedophile. <laughs> Jesus is a paedophile. No, but he did something with fish, didn't he? Tuna and chips? <laughs> that famous meal that everyone loves? Can you imagine if Jesus came down and he was like, I can just multiply tune and you're like, don't give a fuck, it's horrible. Not even good fish. What happens like if the Pope meets cod? Dynamo? What? What happens if the Pope meets Dynamo? What, and he does a card check and he's like, hang on, this is God. Yeah, yeah. some scally magician from fucking Bradford. And the Pope's like, lad, you must be Jesus. And Dynamo's like, yeah, sick, innit? Fucking hell, what's your card? No, but and, then the, and then the Pope's like, hang on, are you Asian? He's like, I don't know, just doing Bradford, isn't it? <laughs> Has the Pope might not have seen magic before? I reckon he has. I reckon the Pope has to keep an eye on every magician just in case. <laughs> I think the Pope's <laughs> the biggest magician going. Yeah. Makes kids. I used to do a bit on stage and it was born out of a genuine sort of belief that I've got. I think Jesus was just the dead and brown of his day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think he was just a magician. If you showed people 200 years ago, dead and brown. They would all just kill themselves. <laughs> yeah. Like, but oh, Denon no. Brown's very open, isn't he? Denon Brown's very like, this is all tricks, it's bollocks, and I'm literally doing it to prove that everyone else and is bollocks. And you still believe him? Yeah, you do. You're not nah, real. <laughs> I do, actually. I think he's lying. <laughs> <laughs> it's such the perfect cover. Denon Brown. Oh, I can't really read your mind. 27. You're like, fuck off. He's like, yeah, it was a trick. Because then he doesn't get burnt as a witch, does he? Doesn't get fucking crucified. Which is what we do. <laughs> this is what we do, innit? Yeah. We probably would, though, if it, if it was would really we? him. Yeah. He'd need sorting out. If he was real, someone would need to put a bullet in his head because he could end everything in. He glued my uncle to his fucking chair. That was bollocks. In though. the living room. That was a such bollocks. My uncle couldn't get out of his chair. Yeah, he's probably just bevy. He was asleep, actually. <laughs> <laughs> he was really born an episode. <laughs> no, I think Jesus was just the, the trickster of his time and was just full of, And his Mars lie, obviously, sort of helped him because <laughs> he was like oh son of god and he was like oh lane i'll do a few fucking what's look at this three fish and then everyone put two and two together and got five and that's how we got christianity so you got more fish what that's how you got more fish <laughs> more tuna <laughs> more tuna and chips <laughs> if he'd have whipped out tuna and chips everyone would be like ah you're bullshit mate there'd be no christianity <laughs> We'd all be Jews. <laughs> what else did they, what other magic tricks did Jesus do? <laughs> Walking on water. David Copperfield's on that. <laughs> I think it was him. Has he made a Learjet disappear, Jesus? No. <laughs> David Copperfield. It wasn't Learjet back point. then, to be fair to Jesus. I suppose. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Daft Carl. <laughs> Denham Brown's predicted the lottery numbers. Denham Brown. No, he's not. No, he's not. Yeah, it was all a trick, wasn't it? No, he's not. What do you mean he hasn't? Well, he hasn't, has he? He hasn't. I watched it on the telly. Oh, did you? <laughs> you watched Space Battles? Holy on the shit, you're right. 
And then fucking those toys talk as well in Toy Story. <laughs> I've seen it on the screen. Mad. He's not predicted, because he, otherwise he wouldn't be like, Channel 4, can I have another TV show? He'd own Channel 4. Right. If he could be like, oh, what's the Euro Millions next week? No, we can't do that one. You do it once. <laughs> oh, he's only got magic once. Yeah. <laughs> Just once. Oh, shit. Yeah, but Should have waited for a rollover. If my like theory is right, is. though, and Denham Brown is actually the son of God, Right. Right. Then he wouldn't want people to know, so he wouldn't just be winning the Euro Millions every week. Hang, hang my baby. The reasoning is is going a bit wonky in it. I'm the son of God, yeah. so I know that. But I don't want people to know. No, he doesn't because he knows right. people aren't ready. Re what? People aren't ready. Yeah, Jesus was punished for being magic. Yeah. He doesn't want to be fucking crucified. He's seen what happens. He's read the novels. Yeah. Stephen King. Uh, next question. <laughs> I've hit my bullshit limit. <laughs> Thanks, Capel. I'm telling you right now, Darren Brown is the modern day Jesus. And vice versa. Lee Miller says, <laughs> would Adam rather shag Dan to save Carl's life or be a ventriloquist? That's a good question. Hang on. Either I die or you become a ventriloquist. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, a hard one to decipher. So, hang on. Just to... You're not allowed to be a comedian anymore. You become a ventriloquist, and you're both all right for the rest of your career. Right? Yeah. Or I bum you. Or you have to bum me, otherwise Carl dies. Right. But if I bum you, I get to keep doing comedy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you doing that for? Because I think you'd be buttering my ass up pretty fucking quick. Um. I mean, you should. Be. Oh my god. If I become a ventriloquist, does he die? <laughs> no. You get to not do that terrible conundrum, right? So ventriloquist and your your sound <laughs> ventriloquist. Can I still do the part? But I'm just like, <laughs> no, it's Adam Rowe ventriloquist with Dan uh, Nightingale comedian. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, I think Darren Brown was Jesus. <laughs> yeah, so do I. That's not ventriloquism, sense. is it? It's the best I could do, Carl. <laughs> fucking wazzy, so you're fucking head. Dan's hungry, you know. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm tired. Uh, what? What? Will you wear a wig? I'm literally going to throw something at you. Would you wear a wig? Why? Why? For bumming. So that I can imagine it's a woman. <laughs> For bumming. I don't mind bumming a woman. Baz. <laughs> Ooh. Um, will I wear a wig? Yeah, I wear a wig. I wear. A, I mean, it's Carl's life on the line. And like a, and like a Harley Quinn outfit. <laughs> Imagine how will sad. You, will you, you imagine be my how, little slot? How, imagine how sad that would be as I was putting my own little Harley Quinn makeup up. Going, I don't need to put the makeup on because you're going to be facing the other. If you turn around once, I'm doing this to get bummed. <laughs> you're really no, you're doing it for me. Squeezing in. Depends if you're hungry or not. I might die. I don't think you could be a ventriloquist. I think you'd have to d decide between Carl's life or my ass. I could. Oh, you, you, you'd I be. I could. Nah. I could, lads. Twenty one doctor of that Adam with your hand. You know, yeah, imagine you... it as a toy. Oh. See? No idea. I could just put it really close to my mouth. What's happening? <laughs> That's it. You could just hide your mouth. Just do that. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> the world's best friend. <laughs> <laughs> All right, lad. All right. <laughs> Good episode this week. Come on. What's the next question? Oh, there, shit. Then? Who's doing this? Who's doing this at the moment? Steve Royal's doing this. He's like, oh, it's dead easy to be a ventriloquist in... Covid, and he puts a mask on. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I don't think you've got it in you. I think I think. Imagine if Shane, if you went over to New York to do gigs, and Schultz was like, "Oh, Adam, come and do. Uh, we're doing Schultz and Friends. Gillis is doing some stuff. Dan Soda's on. Mark Norman's knocking out. Can you do the middle fifteen? And you were like, <laughs> Adam. <laughs> <laughs> As long as you slot it up for me, I'll bum you. Right. Thank, thank you. I appreciate that. Nice one. Because I'm surviving then. Oh, yeah. No one no one wants you to I die. reckon I could bum a man anyway. Like, just once. Me, though. I don't think it's that gay to bum a man. I think it's the gayest thing you can do. No. The gayest thing you can do is get bummed while you're sucking another man off. We've had this argument. While watching years. Hamilton. Yeah. No, Hamilton's really good. No, Sound it's Sound of music. If you bum me, it's definitely gay if we do it in the West End. That a euphemism? <laughs> Show me the south end. <laughs> what fucking euphemism? 
if you bum me, if you bum me with your penis in my ass, it's definitely gay in the West End. Is that a euphemism? <laughs> if it is, I need to work on my euphemism. Subtle. <sighs> oh, it's a guy with my dick. Do you know what I mean? Yep, I've got an inkling. A euphemism. Go on, what's the next one? Um, what, was that, what was that question? I'll oh, be the bumman. Thanks. Go on. <laughs> got some advice. Oh, yeah. I'll solve your problems. Oh, this one's from Capel Pal. <laughs> got a name that sounds like a weird shit. Uh, anonymous. All right, lads. Advice needed. Just for some background info, a few weeks ago, me and a friend were invited to a school reunion. We got talking in the pub about people we remember and what's probably happened to them. And one conversation turned to which of the uh, more slutty girls might have turned to escorting since we left school. We did, have a, we did have a quick... What fucking school did you go to? We did have a quick look on an escorting site to see if there was anyone we recognised from school and didn't see any, but this is where the story unfolds. More recently, my brother-in-law, who hasn't had a relationship in the years I've known him, and as far as I know, doesn't really get any action, introduced us to his new girlfriend, who he'd been seeing for five months but kept it quiet from everyone. By now, you might have put two and two together. But I had a feeling I recognised her. Couldn't place where. She has a very colourful ha- she has very colourful hair, so it's easily recognisable. Then it hit me that I'd seen her on the escort site. Later on, I checked the same site and it was a hundred percent her. Even worse, there was multiple reviews in the five months. This is reviews on escort sites. Even worse, there was multiple reviews in the five months my bro in law was seeing her. So she has been escorting, I'm assuming, behind his back. I did ask him later on some friendly questions about her, like what she did for a living, and he said something very different from escorting, so I'm not sure if he even knows about this side of her or if he's saving face to me and just saying some other jobs. If I was him, I'd want to know if my partner was doing this behind my back, but this is the first lass I've seen him with, and he does seem happy, but really don't know how to question him about it. Do I keep this hidden from him? Or do I tell him um, and potentially ruin his first relationship in over six years? What would you guys do in this situation? Is he not just hiring her as an escort to look like he's got a girlfriend? I reckon that's what's happening. Doesn't get any action. He's never had a relationship. And he's probably got to the point in his life where he's like, you know what, a bit embarrassed by this. I'll buy a girlfriend. Yes, yeah, so he, take, he takes her to events. He's gone to, he's gone to girlfriend blockbusters, hasn't he? Com. Girlfriend, cockbusters. <laughs> do, you, do you think? Yeah. Do you think that's the thing? Yeah. Because just... how could you afford to pay someone to be your girlfriend? No, you don't. Because like, you're not in your house at all times. No, I mean, I mean events... but I mean, if this is, this would already have unraveled by now, wouldn't it? Why? Because how could you afford to constantly keep paying an escort to be your girlfriend? You Maybe he's running an international pyramid scheme. Well, I mean, that is also the option, isn't it? He also has another girlfriend. Maybe it's Darren Brown and he's just won the Euro Millions for the 19th time. (laughs) Um, I think he's hiring this girl to act like his girlfriend. Yeah. Which is very, very common, by the way. Women do it with men all the time. Like, during the going to, like, social events and they're like, oh, I need to, you know, I don't want to go on my own. Yeah. They'll take a a, a pretty escort. And obviously men do it with ladies a lot. I'd love that job. How fun would that be? Just women paying you to go to parties with them. You want to be a gigolo? I don't have to fuck them. I just have to turn up at the party and have some volivons. Yeah. <laughs> That's I think, all you want you to do. I think if a, women is, a woman is going on the site looking for a male escort, yeah. I think, you know, she's not like, he's just so good at anecdotes. Yeah. I don't need the dick. I think you are expected to put out at the end of it. All right, yeah, but what if I'm just like belligerent and an arsehole at the party? So that she's sort of put off and she's like, I don't even want to shag him. Well, you're not going to get paid, are you? Or reviewed. No, I charge up front. Right. Cost charge up front. What do you mean? You wouldn't risk not getting paid at all. You'd be like, I, I, I. So you are going to be a male escort who's really good company for parties. <laughs> charge up front, be a cunt, and be like, ah, I got your money. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Good thinking. Are you mean? wearing this shirt to advertise yourself as a male gigolo? Because this be? is a little sexual, isn't it? Now that I'm just clocking like it, I, I can think see your nipples. This is what you should be wearing on that first male date. I, I really like this shirt. I think you'll get. T- I really like this shirt. I think it makes and me I look think... like a big sexy person. Exactly <laughs> what I'm saying. <laughs> Ladies, adamsescorts.com. Um, right, so 
Back to what back, he, to, what back to my man. But is any women watching this, by the way, who want to give me like five hundred quid to come to a party? Five hundred. Yeah. That's cheap. Mate, you're an open spot gigolo. You you haven't even done a gigoloing gig. But I've been to parties. Uh, yeah, you've been <laughs> to I'm amateur parties. You, you've been. You've been to amateur. You've been as a fucking amateur. You've just turned up for the love of the game. Yeah. Now it's different, man. You're on the fucking clock. I'd be fu- You've I, got to work I'd up to I'd be worth every penny. They're lucky they're getting me for You're 500. You're like a fucking open spot laugh. who's like, lads, I've applied for this gig. When do I get paid? No, 500 quid minimum. No, oh, you've got to do at least for, uh, oh, a couple 600 of years. if you want me to hold your hand. A hundred quid oh, for I a hand some, I want some extras and prices. Mate, it's a hundred quid for hand holding. You yeah. are a pricey male whore, by the way. Yeah, go on. No, you 500 me- is for me to turn up. You ask me how much each thing costs. Okay, then I want you to um, buy me dad a pint. Buy your dad a pint? And have a chat with him. Okay. My God, you understand women as well, don't you? No, you can- That's t- what women want. I want to pay someone to buy my dad a pint. <laughs> no. Hey, hey, hey. Don't worry, Kev. I'll get your pint. I'm expensing this, love. I'm <laughs> no, keeping a receipt. Like you do the that. Like, oh, she's a lovely girl. Yeah, I'm taking her to Gotswold. I, I, would, I would do that. <laughs> I would do that as part of the turning up. That's all right, all right, okay. Because that, that's, that's just party etiquette. Talk to the dad, but the pint, like all, everything I buy at that, that party, is you know added on to the thing. Sorry, what? It's an extra hundred quid to hold a hand. Yeah, but buying a dad a pint is that's part of the etiquette. Yeah, right, cool, cool. <laughs> yeah, cool. what if she wants? Um, what she wants, like a foot rub? What are we talking? A foot rub? Yeah, yeah. yeah. At the party or afterwards or beforehand? Yeah, it would be weird in the middle. What's, what's my dad having? Pint of shandy. Ah, oh, these fucking dogs are barking. Get rubbing these, are we? No, she's just been yeah, dancing, right. doing the Charleston. And you're like, put your feet up here, girl. I'll rub them Hang on, you. dogs are barking. Does that mean sore feet? Yeah. yeah. I think so. Woof, woof. I genuinely... <laughs> Don't ask him today. He's on weird for. <laughs> I genuinely thought it meant me tits or so. The Charleston. <laughs> That's a dance. <laughs> How fucking old is the trick? <laughs> <laughs> I don't need feet. I'm just, I've been down to the Charleston. You buy me pint. My dad, a pint I genuinely thought death. me dogs are barking. Where's me tits or so? Genuinely. <laughs> That'd be a weird foot rub. Me tits are sort of rubbing feet. <laughs> <laughs> my dogs are barking. I don't no, because they're called puppies, aren't they? So, <laughs> I genuinely. Honestly, up until 20 seconds ago, I thought, oh, my dogs are back. I mean, so, ah, fucking hell. That's sports, but I've done a bit of damage. <laughs> <laughs> sports, bro, and the Charleston. It all makes sense. Yeah, Once yeah. again, have a word, no women. <laughs> you know what you're like. You're always going out women and you feel lonely. You're single and you've got sore tits that you call puppies and you wear sports bras, dance the Charleston in a place that your dad is and he's thirsty. That's women. And if you've got a spare 600 quid, you can employ Adam Rowe to come down and maybe hold your hand. Hang on, not a foot rub, that was weird. That sounds like a wedding to me. Oh, yeah. Lord. Go on, what are the other extras? What, what, if, if, what about a little, you know, because she wants to, she, she's trying to make everyone at the wedding think that she's got a boyfriend. So she just wants a, a handhold, but a little a little peck on the on the lips. What's what you're charging extra? Um... I would say 50 quid per peck, 150 quid per, like, full-on neck. Peck and neck, innit? Yeah. Like pick and mix. Like, she wants me to go for it. 150 quid. Do you hate holding people's hands? What? Do you hate holding people's hands? No, I just know me worth. <laughs> and what if she goes, Adam, oi, the disabled are free. Come and lick my muff. <laughs> <laughs> what are the disabled going to do? <laughs> the three? There's just to... a line of them going... No, I think he meant it the disabled is, oh, gigolos yeah. are free, but they all know. The toilets. The disabled oh, the toilet t- is empty. Come yeah. and lick my mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got to lick a woman out while she's sat on the disabled toilet. <laughs> Doing the job. No, there's more, <laughs> there's more room. Right. You know, sports bras on, just in case you really hit the spot. I, I think I'm charging. <sighs> Pussy's both. I think, I think it's 500 quid for me to go to Muff Town. 500 quid to go to Muff Town. Mm. So considering you've had a handheld couple of pecs, Little snog, and a muff, and then your initial fee. We're talking two and a half grand here. Yeah. How much is an overnight stay? Chimpanzee and a quarter. A grand. <laughs> but I, I don't do anything for that. What? Every other sexual act, that's just what? me sort of keeping yours. A thousand pounds for you to fucking share in a bed. Yeah. To talk in your sleep. <laughs> Adam, I'm not joking. I know you do. Are you going to fuck me or not? Whistle for it. <laughs> it's that simple. Girl. Fucking close the windows. <laughs> Flats talking. 
<laughs> Whistle for her. You're, you are expensive, yeah. Fucking grand. <laughs> Spoo me. That's 700. <laughs> And he wants the cash up front. <laughs> she pulls a wallet out. Yeah. 700. A 300 extra if you take that fucking sports bra off. <laughs> All sweaty from the Charleston. <laughs> Classic wedding song. Dance. <sighs> you I think you need to pack in comedy. You're going to do <laughs> way better as a gigolo. That's three grand just for an overnight. <sighs> nice. I reckon it's harder to get to work, though. They're going to be older ladies, though, you know. Oh, I reckon... Oh, he's up to his place now. <laughs> every year over 30 that you are, you add a grand on. All right. So if there's se- 70... 40 grand on top of every... 40. <laughs> 43 grand yeah. for you to hold a hand, peck them twice, lick them off in the disabled... And, and then go just, to bed. And then, and then just talk and you sleep next to them. Yeah. Yeah. We can't... <laughs> I can't be spending a night giving me best sexual game to a 70-year-old woman. I'd fuck her to death. And he wants money for that. 43 grand. You've got a deposit for a house. Just yeah. from one night with an old girl. Yeah, but fucking Linda's going to have the time of her life, isn't she? Linda. <laughs> Linda. Adam, come and lick my muff. How much was that? Take it on. So I'd go and I'd tell him. I think that was. <laughs> is that what you, I'd tell him. Ge- I'd gen- just link them the page and then close WhatsApp. I think you do the absolute pussy old thing. Link the page. You sign up for a new Gmail. You like take yourself out of the trades and be like, I can't be de- asked dealing with this face to face. But mate, here's a few links you might want to look at because Susan is a. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Saz. I'd want to know. You would want to know. I know we've gone on. Oh, I think he's paid, but if he's not, he's. I, listen, I've got nothing against. If you're a sex worker, pay your bills how you want. I've got no, nothing against it morally, but I do think you get to know. I think someone who's in a relationship with someone. I'd hope he knows. Know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'd do the pussy thing of like, I don't want to deal with this in real life. Mm. Like that comedian who stunk. Just send him a fucking. Oh, he's stinks, sending some stinking. Sending some antiperspirant in the post. You stink, mate. <laughs> From a non. Yeah? Yeah. Can we go and get none of those? Break time. We'll be back with Phil Chapman very soon. Hit the button. Oh, let me tell you about one of our sponsors, Stitch Fix. I love clothes. You do, and you love them getting sent to your house. I love wearing clothes that have been sent to my house and tailored for me by, like, essentially an online personal shopper. Yeah, and winter clothes are no use. You know why? Because it's, it's summertime. It's summer, and you need summer, summer clothes. Summer, summer, summer Shorts, time. polo shirts. T-shirts. T-shirts. Ankle socks you might have to look elsewhere for. Stitchfix.co.uk slash word is how you want to order big box of clothes. You, get, you pay just £10 each time you order. That is credited towards the items you keep. Basically, they send you five items... And if you like them all, you keep them all, you get 20% off. If you only like one of them, you can send the other four back and you just pay for the one that you keep. And this is Stitch Fix, one of our favourite sponsors. Like an online personal shopper. Imagine you had someone, like a mate, who you could send the shop for you. They know your sizes, they know the type of clothes you like. Imagine that. And then they just send it to your house. And still, if you don't like it, you just send it back. Get started today at stitchfix.co.uk slash word and get 20% off when you keep all five items. That's stitchfix.co.uk slash word for 20% off when you keep all five items in your fix. Stitchfix.co.uk forward slash word. Get yourself some new clubber because you've started to look a bit scruffy and you don't want that. Not in the summer months while all your mates are looking fly. No. You don't want to be the only one who's like, Ugh, what's John got on? No. Stitch Fix is going to box it off. Nice. Hey! Phil Chapman's here! Hey. How are you, lad? I'm good. I say that like we haven't spent the last two hours together. Yeah, yeah Nando's. <laughs> oh, that Nando's was then. fucking three hey, out win- of five. Witness Nando's, you need to pull your fucking socks up, mate, because that was a load of shite today, wasn't it? What was that? Bollocks. They're really it's the good, worst usually. chicken butterfly I've ever had. There's hardly any skin on it. It's all, it's all I want it for. Right. Crispy skin. Mum's okay. Good for you. But they can't toast the hummus pita bread. 
They just won't no. do it. When you say cook it twice, they're like, oh, do you mean just, make just it? Just toast it a bit more. The hummus looked like ice cream, didn't it? I yeah. To you. But they've got an actual ice cream. That's a scoop. Uh, That's why. I see. I thought that'd be a great. I mean, when they put hummus the in a cone. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. I kids. couldn't eat that. Try I like the couldn't eat hummus on a cone. What, with a 99 in? If you can eat a with chocolate a flake. In it. A chocolate flake. <laughs> Nothing ice cream in the top. <laughs> you mean a flake in it? Yeah. I get you now. He's bugging the shit out I of me know. today. You, you've been it, in a mood all day. Not, I hate it when you do this. I fucking hate it when you do this. He fucking ding, 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 ding. And then you go, you're in a you're fucking mood. You keep biting. Is everything all right? <laughs> oh, don't. <laughs> don't did. I put up with your retarded behavior so much. And then you go, you all right? <laughs> in what, what, what have I done wrong? Fucking hell. What have I done wrong? Is that fucking weird? What have I done wrong? What do you mean? Don't do that. Sorry. Stop it. You're Take jealous of this shit Take and you have been since the second I walked oh, in. I could not. I walked in here and I seen you all happy and you looked at me and looked at the shares and I seen you whisper to yourself, I wish I had that. I yeah, seen yeah, yeah. it. You, you, it Are you, and you say you don't know men. You know me, mate. <laughs> You've got me pinned. Oh, if I put that shirt on, I expect there to be cocaine in at least a pocket near it. That's got, I have got to do cocaine and wear that shirt. I think you'd suit her. Thanks, Carl. I actually heard you one of the Nando bitch. chefs say, Shut up, you funny. he's going to teach him a lesson for wearing that shirt. Is that why he made him a yeah, shit yeah. butt? Oh, maybe that shit. was it, you know. Oh, maybe made that him was it. in Nando's. Oh, that makes sense. You're too sexy for witness Nando's. They're like, I can't concentrate. I'm too sexy for witness <laughs> Nando's. Oh, too my God. For Nando's. It's not really Leanne's fault. She's overcooked the chips. Look how fuckable that guy is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I was just a little salivator. I think, yeah, I just think, you you know, I seen you look at me and I seen it. Just yeah, it's really put my, <laughs> it's put me off kilter the whole day. I know. I'm, well, it's difficult, isn't it? Trying to well, podcast look, with someone that you find sexually attractive all of a sudden. <laughs> totally. I just don't know why I, you don't wear things that you like to be a bit more flamboyant. You clearly want to. Well, yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's about me. I think it's Stop about. Stop playing it safe. I think it's about my sexuality now. <laughs> you walked in today. I was like, oh my God, I am gay. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> and then I've been all off today. And also, Carl's an annoying cunt. So there's that in it. I'm gay now and Carl's a cunt. No, Although always, that's pretty... Sorry, can, you've can always I finish? Been gay. Can, I, can I finish? Can I finish? You've always been gay. Carl, can I finish? Oh, I get it. He's pissed off with you because we're best friends and he wants to fuck me and he's like, oh, if anyone gets to talk, I'm just going to be Carl. Jealousy. It makes so much sense. Oh, oh, awesome. And Carl's a cunt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Carl, yeah but you only think that, cunt, yeah. Sound like a little bitch. Cock block and Carl. Okay. Yeah. Um, speaking of clothes, what are the Asheville tourists? Asheville tourists. We're a baseball club? Minor league baseball team. Yeah. Right. That, that's a really nice logo as well. I nearly bought a hat with that on oh, in London yeah. a couple of weeks Carnaby ago. Carnaby Street. Uh, on Carnaby Street in the New Era store. But the reason I didn't is because it wasn't the right shape for my head. <laughs> Round. S some hats just, you've seen me in certain hats. Yeah, yeah, some hats. Some hats suit me. Some of them, you know, I look like a kid on his way to Disneyland. I don't reckon the final too. time. <laughs> You need a trilby with that shit. <laughs> For the final time. <laughs> He's been going weekly. But now they're going to kill him. Uh, I meant to die in one. You, um, you, got, you suffer from big head syndrome though, don't you? Like, and that's I've got from... long head syndrome. Yeah, it's like a loaf. Yeah, I got called loaf head at school because the front and the back stick out like a hovis. <laughs> Look, you see? Loaf head. Yeah, I got called loaf head at school and Ben head as well. We Aww. had a kid at my school. They had to go to the, uh, they had to go to the college to get him an American football helmet because his head was so big. Wow! Well, how old? How, what? 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 Is this America? Obviously. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was his head. This was is so pee wee big. football, and he had to have a grown man's fucking helmet. Yeah, yeah. They, well, this is high school football. High school. They had to go to the college because they were like, "There's no helmets big enough for right this wow. massive head." Did my you? My head shrunk a bit, like over what? the years. No, no, it has. No, you just grew more head shrunk. What? You just grew bigger head. Your face got bigger. Shrunk. No, hats didn't used to fit me at all, and now they do. So my head must have got smaller because hats haven't changed, have they? No, you can't. Come on, my head shrunk. Your ears keep growing. Your nose keeps growing, and your head shrinks. Uh, come Mine on. did. <laughs> I'm telling you. Just like hats that didn't used to fit me fit me now. In ten years, so how has that happened? But they didn't fit you like you couldn't get it on, or they couldn't fit you like. Like I would put it on, and it would stretch my eyes up. Couldn't they sleep in they probably, did. they probably didn't Have a working class mom. It's giving me a headache. That's your hat. <laughs> You've had it since childhood. You'll, you'll and you're shrink into it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Smoking round him. 
<laughs> Mom, I'm coughing, I know, but you're red shrinking. <laughs> American football, but you played football. At, oh God! Could you you grew up? Did in, you play football? I never played. No, I just oh, went right. to watch. Yeah, right, like, okay. that looks too violent for me. You you went to school in America. For those of our listeners who are not aware of that, did yeah. you play any sports? I played ice hockey, which is not the most popular sport in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> well, Probably, like, I'm going to be different. <laughs> and I was on the soccer team, but I didn't play. I was on the bench. <laughs> No, I've got a, a varsity jacket which says number one bench warmer. Oh, because I was the favorite player that never played. Right. Aww. Proper used to. You were the Phil Neville of your high school fucking. Yeah. Oh, okay. Parents love me. Um, Never got on the field. Did you, and... you know, in our school, did you do trials for the footy team in year seven? Um, I don't think so. I did. And I, I got think... put on the B team and then just. Was, and this is how arrogant I was even then because our school's A team was full of like academy players a specialist sports college like almost everyone in the first team played for like Liverpool or Wigan or Tramier or whatever you were at a specialist sports college yeah yeah Stephen Gerrard went to our school mate that's something I did not expect yeah. Cardinal yeah, yeah. Leenan was a specialist sports college right. and John Welsh made a recruitment school right. um, they just played him up front and went he'll just get his head on it just <laughs> <laughs> ping crosses from anywhere and just see if big I got I got put <laughs> on it. I got told, yeah, you've made it, but you're the B team because the fit. And I was so like, fuck off. I just never ever went. I don't think I played because <laughs> offended. <laughs> like B team. Oh, like they were all cocks. What? I think I will have done it because there's no reason I would have. But I realised quickly that everyone who likes football in big school is an absolute tit. Like the football team lads are a majority tits. There's a couple of cool ones, but even in our school. Yeah, beat lad. Come on. Two of them are murderers. <laughs> One of them's doing 30 years, and he was on the footy. No, they were all dickheads. Like, they thought they were the cool kids because they played footy. Yeah. But they, they were. Like, they weren't. In their heads. Well, In you were the cool kid because you played ice hockey. Well, I was the uncool kid because I played ice hockey. They what? had to, like, meld three. Where was your. In together. Texas? Where was your. Where in Texas? Houston. Well, Houston. Outside Houston. Right. Ice hockey rink? About an hour away. Right. So a proper drive. Not in Houston. <laughs> no. But no, it was still in Houston. You can drive for an hour in Did Houston. Did you just go ice skating with a stick? Yeah. On your basically. own. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the school team. <laughs> that fucking half British kid's weird, isn't he? <laughs> was it an indoor rink? It was an indoor rink. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been a swimming pool, wouldn't it? Short season. It only happens once every three years <laughs> when Houston gets frost. <laughs> Is that would be good to see though, like an outdoor in like blazing heat. You were just in Dubai. Imagine yeah, if there'd yeah. been an ice rink there. Yeah. Imagine how what? many Mexicans could be amazing ice hockey players. Okay. <laughs> okay. Playoff. Just a really short ice hockey team. Um, is American school as rough as it looks on like, like when it's dramatized? This is from the kids that went to murder a high. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean, like, it looks, like, if, if you're not a cool guy, it looks odd. Like you look like you yeah, and by the way, yeah. our, all of our research for this is based entirely on really yeah. bad high school films. I've seen <laughs> you pretty much everyone's research on Americans when they talk to you about it. They're I've like, seen Euphoria. You go... I've seen the program Euphoria. Euphoria. I've seen American Pie, all of them apart from the reunion. Yeah, but there's that's... always there's always bullying in every. Yeah, it looks horrible. Yeah, but that's any school. No, but it looks like institutionalized bullying. Oh like... yeah, definitely. Like you know when like school shooters go on a spree, I'm like, yeah, it didn't surprise me. Not even like the guy. I'm like. So like I was from our school shot other people years later. They never did it actually in the school. Oh, yeah, no, they start early there. That's, <laughs> why, that's why you need to be a one-man ice hockey team. Yeah, yeah. Because school shooters aren't doing an hour-long commute, are they? <laughs> <laughs> They're going in the gymnasium away. that's right there. <laughs> away Where's the, the ice hockey team? Not yeah. getting shot. Yeah. That's where. Some, as somewhere far away in Austin. from this place yeah. as possible. But was it like, was it like jocks? Like there was, nerds. like, my, my high school was, like, it was a decent high school, but, like, they, they basically go, decent high school, and then they build another one, and then after that one's built, that one becomes the shit one. Yeah. So it's like malls. You know, like the uh, shit ones. Oh, really? They basically, we go, that's the shit one now. But would, there be pe would, would there be like lads in fucking varsity jackets throwing nerdy kids into lockers and locking them in there for the day and stuff? Yeah. Maybe yeah. that kind of stuff. I mean, I never got that. Because he was wearing that number one bench <laughs> yeah. Guys, I'm one of I'm you. actually the varsity soccer team. <laughs> I think you'll find I played three minutes this season. So what? What? Where did you slot in in the um, in the society that was school? Uh, Surely you would have been a really slot in at all. I was just a weird English kid. You were mean girls, weren't you? You were the girl came from Africa. Yeah, 
Yeah. I put, I did, when I was interacting <laughs> with people, I put on like a... He was the new guy bag. from another continent. Yeah. It's very, very good If analogy. you're ever in trouble in America, you just put on the most British accent you can. And you get out of anything. Hello. Oh, sorry, officer. I didn't realize these drugs were illegal. What's Fuck that? off. <laughs> yeah. What, like, what they... Does it have to be like Hugh Grant British or could I just use yeah, my you've voice? Yeah, got to go Hugh Grant British. Couldn't just do like, what the fuck are you Scouse, talking to? Nah, nah, nah. Weed, sound, can't yeah. do that. <laughs> no. And he's like, yes, lad. <laughs> we got an Iranian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think in Texas they're going to be able to pick up a Scouse accent. They're just going to think you're Al-Qaeda. Yeah, especially if you're wearing that shirt. I think you're from Mexico. Yeah. This isn't Mexican. This is very much. these giant-headed Mexicans in. <laughs> no, I can't look at shirt back. anymore. It's kind of making me question my marriage. <laughs> Border tits. What about the police? The police. In America, because they're, you know, famously naughty. What are they like? Naughty, yeah. Fucking terrifying, mate. Carly's white. So. Yeah, but still. <laughs> you can a middle class white kid. Fucking terrified. Of what? the police? In, of the police, yeah. What? They've, they've got, I've, I had a gun pulled on me by cops twice. <laughs> For what? Once getting out of the car and walking towards <laughs> them. Get back in the car! Yeah, yeah. Because you're not, you know, like here, you get in the back of the police car. Yeah. When you get pulled over. Oh, you have to stay there, in the you vehicle. You have to stay in the car, 10 and 2. And no you were like, movements. hello, officer! Uh, hello, officer! What <laughs> seems to be the problem? <laughs> this guy's fucking And drunk. what about the other time? Uh, the other time was at a party, and it was like on a bunch of us. <laughs> Just they, That's the go to thing. They're like, because get my- on the ground. <laughs> All of you get on the ground. Yeah, because to be fair to the American cops, if there's a chance that everyone else has guns, yeah, you probably, as a police officer, think I might get a gun out first. Yeah, yeah, I might, yeah, just strike while the and there are. lies in the problem. It's, it's, I, I literally, I couldn't be an American I busy. Just, I honestly, you can't give me a gun and tell me to keep people in line because I will use it. Yeah, but that's what they want. Yeah, I know, but They're like, I, just get your gun out. Yeah, I'd just be so tempted. First person who rejected my authority. What was that? No, the leg. Do you know what I mean? I'd just be like, fuck off, lad. Say, anyone else? No. The exactly. leg. Through the car window, the you'd leg. have to reach in. The leg. <laughs> yeah, he's already thought. The scary thing is, he's already thought about it. No, Carl, the leg. Yeah. He's sat in the car. <laughs> the window down. reach in and fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> he's just wind the window down a bit further. And You're driving no way, lad. <laughs> Excuse me, officer. Do you know the way to the mall? Fucking leg. <laughs> leg. Like the way you fucking yeah. off there. You could have walked there, love. Until you fucking mouthed up about it. Fuck you off. would be awful. <laughs> I've just got no patience. I like your shirt. Sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> there you gone. Oh, someone said they like the shirt. They're like, you know what, lad? You have to go. You've earned it. I'd like to see cops in that shirt. Just all wearing the Miami Vice. Badge. Yeah. Watch Miami Vice. Miami I'd Vice like shirt. Cops. <laughs> <laughs> Lot of uh, school drink. That's the other cliche, isn't it? That because you can't go on the piss till you're no twenty one. Twenty one. Yeah. Absolutely legendary house parties. Yeah, yeah. We did some good house partying. Oh. Like we were. Our mate's uncle was a bounty hunter. <laughs> America's mad. Yeah. Now. And he lived downtown, and they had a fucking tree house in their backyard. <laughs> right. Like it went out into a bayou. And when I say tree house, you're thinking like, oh, just climb the steps. It was like a full on like adventure playground thing. Yeah. It was amazing. You don't say no to that invite. No. My bounty hunter uncle is having a party in a tree house. You're like, your first instinct is, sounds like a pedo, but <laughs> yeah. I sort of can't miss it. Also, just all the drugs that they've confiscated. They were just like, oh, we have a thing of drugs. I mean, back then I was like, I'm just booze. Got to oh, stick with the old. See, I'm just booze now, largely. Like I... I've done drugs, I just don't like them. I never feel good about myself after having done them. Unless yeah. it's pot. Yeah. Apart you, from pot. So you didn't grow up near the Mexican border, though. No, that's what I'm saying. If that was me at what, 13? 13. No, 13. It was more 17 when we were doing this. Party. Oh, yeah. see, I was partly well, we were started that, much younger than that. Like, they were quite. They, if I, I was, was offered crack hunter. at 13, I reckon I'd have become a crackhead. <laughs> is what I'm saying. Might have gone in the 80s. Had a win? Football. In the leg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could you have resisted crack at 13? Yeah. What a stupid question. Could you have resisted crack? <laughs> I can't it's resist not... this. Come here. Nom, nom, nom. Uh, How'd you do crack up? You eat it. <laughs> oh, nom, 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 <laughs> crack is so Moorish. Yeah. Put it in a pack of Haribos. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Crackable. Yeah, I think I could. At 13. 
you know. Your, all your mates are having a go on the old crap. No, all my mates are playing Warhammer. <laughs> so I reckon yeah. I'd be like, do you know what? I've got to finish this no, Blood Angels painting. I'm not saying that, am I? What <laughs> Who do you collect? <laughs> Ultramarines? No, I'm on crack. <laughs> <laughs> Thing is about Warhammer 40k, a bit boring. Have, no, you, ever, Lance, have you ever tried it on crack? Space Wolves. I'm saying, if you were in, pipe. If you were in Preston and your mate had a multifunctional treehouse and his bounty hunter dad was like, do you want some crack? And all your mates were doing crack, are you telling me you'd have been there going, no, I'm going to play Pokemon Blue. Bollocks. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, honestly, I can't argue with you. That's quite a specific That's actually what we did. Are you trying to tell me that if you're there in a treehouse in Preston and 13 and everyone's doing crack, you could resist crack if you were pinned down and crack was put in your leg? Dan, who's painting space walls then? I don't know. Good point, Adam. Really good point. And lovely nipples. Yeah, I think 13 I could. At 17, I think then, they, you know. They didn't offer crack. I <laughs> they were quite responsible drug users. They were like, <laughs> what drugs right, were they offering? Like, we got Bud Light over there, weed over there, crack. <laughs> oh, was it just weed? Yeah, it was just like weed. Uh, oh, and uh, balloons. What are the nitrous oxide? Oh, ah, rubber pot. Yeah, that's what they call it. Uh, yeah, that's so a little different. Yeah, that's not what I thought it was. I thought you were having a big crack and pills party, at thirteen in the show. <laughs> Imagine if that was how he made all pills. his business as a bounty hunter. <laughs> Just inviting 13 year olds around, <laughs> giving them crack. So, bounty hunters, can they kill the person? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Well, it's like. No. Normal. No. You can defend yourself. Oh. No. You've not got license to kill people. You've got to. There's a warrant out, and you've got to take them into custody. Dead or you alive? You don't get to. Oh, I don't think it is dead or alive. Oh, it's Because otherwise, about- murderers could just be like, yeah, I'm a bounty hunter. <laughs> warrant. Pow, pow, pow. Oh, oh. shit. Right, you can't you can shoot him in the leg. <laughs> That's all. What did you what think a bounty hunter was? No, I've just thought, I've just got onto what a bounty hunter is. I thought a bounty hunter was someone owed someone else money and they went and got it. But that's a bailiff, isn't it? Yeah. Essentially. A bounty hunter is, there's a warrant out for Carl's arrest. I go to his house, take him to the police station and they give me the reward money for him. Yeah. No, yeah, no is- but the bounty hunters work for the bail bonds company. Yeah. So they, when you got, if you got arrested and yeah. they were like, it's 10 grand bail. Yeah, you go to the the bondsman and say, "Can I uh, borrow ten grand to give to?" It's the- a it's a very it's hard to understand because there's nothing like it in English the English ju- judiciary system. There's not yeah. it doesn't work like you buy the debt. You you basically the the bounty hunter then takes on that debt. Yeah, and gets them back, and that's why they have to get them back because but they they're need not allowed to. Ju- they're not the police. They're not allowed but to. What powers do you have then? You just walk away. They can you arrest them? Handcuff them. They can, yeah. They can arrest them. They've yeah. got arrestable powers. They can kick your door down if they need to. Oh shit! They've got Gotta watch Dog the Bounty Hunter, guys. Yeah, I, it was one of my favorite trash TV bits. They had what did they have? Famously, Bear Mace. They yeah, ne- yeah, they, they never, never had guns. guns. Yeah, he wasn't allowed a gun, was he? They just turned up a with Bear Mace, but it was like they all everything was like, oh my god, you look like sort of an FBI tactical team. And what you were was a fucking lunatic and his big fat peroxide wife and everything they'd bought, you could have got on Amazon, like Velcro, everything. (laughs) All available at Walmart. Yeah, Hang on. And then they went bounty hunting. Yeah. On Hawaii. Carbine rifles. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why, by the way, everyone's on crystal meth. I've never watched... Dog the Bounty Hunter. You what? would oh love it. And yeah. I thought it was a cartoon, was a cartoon about yeah. a dog the Bounty Hunter. No. It, the dog. I am the dog. The big bad dog. You're telling me Dog the Bounty Hunter? He's a big man. He looked like a 1980s wrestler. It's a real thing. It's like a documentary. He, I think he was related to Hulk Hogan. He's like <laughs> his fifth cousin. You it's have... so amazing, and he's. You've never watched it. Have you and watched his, it? And no, his wife. No, that was so you're sad. telling me Hulk Hogan's fifth cousin <laughs> is a bounty hunter in Hawaii. And there's in Hawaii, and there's a documentary about him, and it's not a cartoon about a Dalmatian who goes and arrests people. You're thinking of Scooby Doo? No. <laughs> but uh, you know we're getting into animation, so I think we've got an angle here. <laughs> Doctor Bounty Hunter. <laughs> yeah. Woof woof. Hang on. What happens if the kid who's arresting just says I'm a bounty hunter as well? You're under arrest. Uh, right. How would that work? I don't see how they've got this power. Wait, well, they're, the because they're licensed. Going after you have to, they're licensed like bounty train. hunters. Oh, you have to train up. Yeah. What a, yeah what you a, can't just decide one day to be a bounty hunter. <laughs> <laughs> also, amazing, like, well, well, I'm a bounty hunter, and <laughs> you're under arrest. <laughs> All right, well, that's the end of that. See you later. That's Clever, right. that. <laughs> I'm a policeman, and you're a paedophile. No, I'm a policeman, and you're a paedophile. 
Yeah, but Who it's a civil arrest. Up? Who's proof is it? <laughs> huh? That's what I mean. It's civil it's arrest. It's the courts. The courts. There is a warrant out for their arrest. Right. They're not just going up to people in the streets and being like, you, come with me for money. It's not random, is it? It sounds random. It's not the way to get out of it. Well, I'm a bounty hunter as well, so <laughs> keep walking. And I think you'll find that everyone you're trying to arrest today is also a bounty hunter. <laughs> there you go. If I was a criminal, I'd get a licensed bounty hunter. Flip it on them. Um, one way, actually. Imagine sitting in a jail cell. Should have said I was a bounty hunter. <laughs> <laughs> so they can do everything but, like, harm people, I'm guessing. They can't, like... They've just got to get... Uh, I mean, they can this, rough them up a bit. Yeah. I can legally do WWE wrestling moves on you. <laughs> That's why Hulk Hogan's cousin yeah. does it. Yeah, <laughs> he taught him. They can legally do that. They can't like punch you because obviously, like the. Punch. Why are you telling me like ten minutes ago or ten seconds ago? You didn't think this was a cartoon about a dog? No, I didn't think. Do I thought I know what bounty hunters are. Oh, right. I just thought the dog, the bounty hunter, was a cartoon about it. It was so. But they bad. can do like yeah. they can rock so bottom yeah for your money. They literally <laughs> built it up like today we're going after duh, 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 and there's like the warrants out for him. He's like done this, he's done that, he's done that. Yeah. And then they get there and he'd be like, right guys, we're going in. And they'd be two SUVs all strapping up like if you got them bear and they've got bear maze, so it looks like a gun, but it's actually bear maze. And then they get there, knock on, and they're like, Is he here? And they're like, and his mum's like, No, he's not here. And they're like, Is he here? No, he's not here. Right. Well, let us know if he comes home. And then they just wander off. So they haven't got warrants, like, to go in? No, they do, because the court issues the warrant, gives it to them. Mad. But they, they, they're, they're no, like... No, they can't they, go in people's houses in, unless... They used to go in people's houses all the time. No, yeah, they did, if they were invited in. They're not, oh. They can't just break doors they're like down. like vampires, then? Yeah, they're they like vampires. They always used to go around the back, send baby Lisa around the back. Baby Lisa. Send baby <laughs> Lisa around the back. What's this I think you would... Imagine getting arrested by baby genuinely, Lisa. Genuinely, I think you would love this show. <laughs> okay, How old was the baby? She was about she's like 23, 24. Yeah, yeah. Six months she was, old. She was Scouse. She was the youngest. <laughs> baby Lisa. Ah, I think she tried ah, cracking ah, baby. <laughs> hey, send the baby around the back. <laughs> she's just eating chew, man. That's such a great reference. <laughs> send our baby around. <laughs> it's our baby's 23rd. <laughs> going to Brody. We've got her some bear mace. That's what she wants. So they can mace people? I mean, you very rarely saw it, but yeah, they had bear mace. Yeah. Loads, Loads of mace. <laughs> It's like a fire extinguisher. <laughs> oh, God. I, that sounds incredible, right? Watch it. Maybe we should do a watch along. The best along. part was at the end when they give him the talk to. You know, he'd like, he'd proper like, Get him in punch him in the face and like, yeah. wrestling him down. Once then they're in the, the SUV. Yeah, once they're in the SUV. And he'd be like, like we solved it. Yeah. Right, dog? And he'd go, Ruby, <laughs> <laughs> Ruby, 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 Ruby. Ruby, 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 Ruby. Uh, that's how Scooby Doo says his own name. Yeah. No, he says Raggy. He doesn't oh. say Ruby Roo. He, he says his own name, which is Ruby Ruby Roo, because he can't pronounce his Scoobs. He says, Sco he, says, why this? he says Scooby Doo. Ruby Ruby Roo. Ruby, Ruby, Ruby. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, he doesn't. Yes, he does. Ruby Ruby Roo. <laughs> Jonathan Ross. Yeah. He fucking does. I'm telling you right oh, now. Oh, here we go. Hey, Scooby he goes Scooby Dooby Dooby Doo. Scooby Doo yeah. saying Scooby Doo. Scooby Dooby Doo. <clears throat> it's like a copyrighted. Oh, God. <laughs> we look at YouTube that? Premium. I thought that was part of the. How fancy was Scooby Doo? The hell on mid. Ready? <laughs> ready? Are we ready? Scooby Dooby. Doo. Yes! Oh my God! Yes! Ring the bell! Ring the bell! He went Scooby Dooby Dooby Doo. It was like you clicked on. Can I watch a video of Scooby Doo being said by the most enunciated way ever? It's Scooby Dooby Doo. <laughs> and that's when we worked out Adam had a hearing impairment. He doesn't <laughs> say Ruby Ruby Ruby. You're thinking of the Kaiser Chiefs? Is it the Kaiser Chiefs? <laughs> yes. Scooby 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 Scooby. <laughs> 
Oh, oh my fucking god! <laughs> oh my god! Scooby Dooby oh Dooby Doo! If that was on the, if the shoe was on the other foot, you would still be stood up, <laughs> loving that. It's so beautiful. Oh. oh. So, the cops in America. <laughs> Just trying to circle this back. <laughs> <sighs> oh. But they are scary, aren't they? They've all got guns. Yeah. When we see, when I see police oh. with guns in the UK, I'm like, oh shit, it's jarring, isn't it? Yeah. I always airport, think it, basically it's just the airport. I, I don't think, think yeah. I've ever seen it. No, I've seen them in train stations that recently in London. Yeah, There's I a saw lot more of it around. Do and not I like just patrolling the streets of London as well. Lytham Festival had armed guard, armed police everywhere. And do you know what's festival. really, you know what's really Lytham, funny? And, and Lytham I, Festival <laughs> on the filed coast. Yeah, and they were like Al Qaeda. <laughs> Al Qaeda. Do you know always... when they've got the rifles and they've got the finger like behind the trigger? Yeah, they were all doing that. About fifty of them up the road. Yeah, it's happening more in London. You just see them walking about. But the police who have them always look like they're shitting themselves. I don't know if you've noticed that. They look nervous. They're like sure. I don't want to have to fire this again. You no, know, like. Do you know what I mean? There's loads of paperwork over it. Yeah. Whereas there, you're the, just like... The opposite is... <laughs> shooting the leg. I'm more scared <laughs> of a busy with a bat on than a, than a gun. I'm shitting, because if I shoot three people, yeah. God, I've got a weekend planned away, and you know? <laughs> yeah. all that paperwork. What's the opposite of a nervous... like? Someone like yippee ki yeah, like you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'll fucking shoot you, I will, and I'll be confident about it. Yeah. Spinning it, spinning it. No, but you know how busies are always like, you know, a pig scum are like, they're all like confident and cocky and like follow themselves. Unless they've got a machine gun and then they're nervous. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's like they know that like they can't really use they're it. All just when they've got going, a stick, they're like, yeah, whoopie, whoopie, whoopie. Oh, fucking little rat. Yeah, it's you facts. can see it in their Straight eyes. Facts. If they wanted it, yeah, the ones with the guns don't want to shoot you. Fact. The Lytham <laughs> Festival they had guns. Honest, I was I was like, holy shit. Lytham for one and being a, a small music festival with strokes are playing. I seen a busy at Download Festival a couple of years ago with a bazooka. Just in case it all kicked off. Do you remember that terrorist attack a few years ago? <laughs> that's all for the nativity. All they had armed guards outside the nativity. <laughs> <laughs> in case they came alive. Yeah. Like they were like, just in case anyone attacks the nativity. And it was like it's a plastic baby Jesus. <laughs> What's that gonna do? It sounds like America, doesn't it? I wish it was. It's here. <laughs> have your family got guns in the States? No, they don't live there anymore. But they didn't have guns. No, Hang on. So t tell us the timeline of you. you. You were born here. Yeah. Moved and there. then what happened? What, like, you were like, I'm going to go to Texas for a bit. No, my dad was working out there. Right. So they were like, listen, you're working out here. Move the fam. In oil? Yeah. Right. Move the fam. He was a part time ice skater as well. Yeah, part time. <laughs> Mexican ice skater. He made the team. <laughs> Have you ever touched a gun? Have I touched a gun? Yeah. I mean, like, not like we've done. How do you think I was so good at shooting on the stack? Hey, you just beat me. Me and Phil got to the final of the shooting. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I just thought you were American. You caught you had a fucking. Oh, I didn't I'm have there. a gun, but like, friends had guns. I'd have a gun if I had it in America, like, 100%. I'm not sure they'd allow you. Not looking nervous. They wouldn't allow me. I think they'd use the last half an hour of this episode to <laughs> yeah. make sure you didn't have a gun. I suspect you They famously don't like... do background checks. You come walking, I don't even have to tell me name. I'm John Gunn. Give me my gun. <laughs> You don't even have to show ID to buy a gun. Etching exactly. the name on it. John. <laughs> gun. <laughs> like for everything, you have to show like 10 forms of ID. Booze, everything like that. But guns, they're like, yeah, we'll take your word for it. Because of the Second Amendment? Yeah. That's the whole, that's absolutely mental about There's it. There's no way I'd be it. living in a country where everyone's got a gun but me. Like I need a level playing field, do you know what I mean? What gun well, that's, the, but that's the problem, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. That's li you've just totally. I'm all yeah. for gun control. I think it's the right thing to do. Especially like with, you know, the school shootings on all the recent problems over there, which is ridiculous. But while everyone else has got one, I'd be having at least, like, uh, 12 guns in my house. <laughs> Imagine it, what Scousers would be like <laughs> if there was, like, no gun laws over here. Yeah. It would be... Look at baby Lisa. What are her gold <laughs> fucking <laughs> Uzi. That's what she wanted. She's 18 now. She needs her. I'd have a gun hanging off the back of my front door. Like, just in case. What, the knocker? Yeah. Knock with a desert eagle. <laughs> that's the worst place to put it because that's tent. Like, that's where they come through. The door. Oh, yeah. But like, just can you move out of the way a second, mate? Just need to grab that. Yeah, well, if you've got Go one on. over every door. <laughs> <laughs> the Amazon guy yeah. nervously <laughs> ringing Adam's bell. <laughs> like so. Just reaching up. Oh, package, is it? <laughs> you see the little slip come through the door. Adam's <laughs> get back here, boy. Oscar Adam's new missus. We haven't had post for two years. I know. <laughs> Fucking. 
If, yeah, if the UK brought guns in as the same as the States, would you get one? Would you be hundred percent? Without any shadow of a doubt, I'd have a double barreled shotgun within an hour. He's got his job. <laughs> I don't think I get one. They had like a gun amnesty the other day in America somewhere, and someone just went on the 3D printer thing and printed off loads of 3D printed guns. So they were unregistered and then turned them all in. Oh, the guy who they killed would, um, they, Shinzo Abe killed him with it, uh, yeah, plastic, plastic printed, printed gun, gun, yeah. Was that the Japanese PM or yeah. former PM? He was essentially he was a conservative, so all my students hated him because he was essentially like David Cameron. Yeah, but right. Then, but then he got killed, and I was like, "Oh, that's a bit shit." And he it? was one of the chief writers on the original Pokemon series as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, he was a busy man. <laughs> he deserved to die. <laughs> um, that was the worst series. <laughs> <laughs> Kill him. You held it back. <laughs> Would you have a gun, Dan? If if you went, listen, uh, we're going to go out to the states. Gun, open carry's legal. Protect your family. Would you go out and go? Would you go to the local Asda? I mean, it, yeah. If the government came out and went, protect your family. No, I mean you could. <laughs> you had the you had the right to. I'm not saying they're telling you to, but like you had the constitutional right to protect your family with a gun. Well, it would be a slow start, wouldn't it? It would be a slow start, but then within twenty years, there'd be. There'd be a massive problem. I don't although, think it would be as slow a start as you think. Yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't Most go and people get would have a machine gun yeah. in a week. We ran out of hand sanitizer during the yeah. pandemic. <laughs> That's, it was a that national is a, shortage yeah, of bog roll. I can't get a bog roll or a gun. Fucking nightmare. I don't, um, like don't want to shoot anyone. But there are countries around the world that have a lot of guns per capita, don't they? And they don't have the gun problem that the States have. There's something about the culture. Well, is it not the... I think it's the schools. That's it what definitely I'm saying. is. Mate, my, I was ready to shoot up the school day one. Day one? Day one. <laughs> and if you had, you'd maybe gotten that yeah, fucking yeah. soccer team. <laughs> <laughs> There's been a school shooter. He shot the first 11. <laughs> okay, Didn't really Does think anyone about... Know how to play? <laughs> should have just shot one guy and he'd have gone on. Don't shoot the whole team. Because yeah. then it's you and just the Mexican ice hockey players. <laughs> but it is surely the... the the way schools are making incels and stuff and making like people get have horrible starts to the life. Yeah, right. but it's that's prison. what it is. You go you go in, like day one, I went in strange country, only been there like a week and a half. And I How old in, were you? Fourteen. So high school was my first day. Okay. Like and I went in and they like literally they sat me down and gave me like a slip and they were like, Here's your locker and here's your schedule. And I was like it was like G ninety three. And I was like, where is this locker to the teacher? And she was like, I don't know. I've never heard of the G lockers. They must be new. And I was like, okay. And then every class, the teacher would come in, give you uh, like a little speech for like five minutes on what you were going to expect for that year. And then make you come to the front of the class and sign out a like 10 kilogram textbook. And then go, make sure you put that in your locker. You have to bring it every class. And every teacher, I go, where is this locker? And they go, I don't know where the G lockers are. So I couldn't find this locker for the first... Oh, you must have felt so you not get like And a, I got like seven books, like all 10 kilos just, and I was like a fucking nerd walking around. Oh God. Everyone else knew where the lockers were. What I couldn't find mine for have? two weeks. And everyone just passes it on to someone else. That's why I was ready to shoot up the school by the end. Because <laughs> by the end of the day, I was like, where's this fucking locker? I and have never like, gone back I don't know, you'll have to ask somebody. And I was I, like, I've I, asked I'd have been so scared people. after the first two teachers who didn't help me. I'd have gone, I'm not going there again. I'd have been so scared that I wasn't going I asked every teacher. Yeah, that's audible. Did you not get I was like, a buddy? Huh? Did you not get assigned a buddy? No. Everyone oh. was new. Like, first day for all the freshmen. Oh. But it's like the first day in prison. <laughs> Massive school as well. Ginormous. Thousand something people in my year. Oh, see, that's, that, that, that's, that's, that's what I mean. American school seems hard work. Yeah. yeah. And, like, I didn't get lunch till, like, the end of the day. Like, lunch was, like, like an hour left of school. What? Yeah. To go the whole day, start at seven in the morning, go all day, no food. Fuck! Carrying like 70 kilos of textbooks around because you can't find your fucking locker. By the way, when I did find it, the combination was wrong. <laughs> how, long were you, how long were you at the school? The whole four years. The um, whole of high school? Yeah, yeah, did the whole high school there. What were you like at the end though? Were you not like the cool English guy? No, I'd sort of lost the accent then. Right. And I was kind of one of them. You're less American than when I first gigged with you 10, 12 years ago. People, it's the number one question I get asked, where the fuck are you from? Yeah, because your and accent is ambiguous, isn't it? Yeah, but there's loads to it. It's You've not got like the Andrew Tate a, thing going on, and I don't mean that in a cunty way, but that's the same, like... I have the same views on women. 
<laughs> that's why we booked you. Yeah. You don't have the same views on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're doing all right, Phil, but you know what I mean? My man is cleaning up. Yeah. God. What do you think about him? We've talked about it recently, haven't we? He's, he's fine. Did we talk about it on this? Oh, shit. Did he come uh, up last week? Uh, he came up when he was away. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Andrew Tate, the king of TikTok. I don't really want to talk about him for very long because I don't want to give him any more air time than whatever, but he's, uh, he's oh, going to create many, many problems for young women, isn't he? Yeah. And it's like the people, it's the incels, isn't it? Do you want to create these horrible fucking horrible murderous man. incels? Yeah. yeah. It's an odious cunt. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's Good. why we can't have guns. Andrew Tate. <laughs> yeah. I've never even really seen close. a gun. Like, never. we've shot the shotgun at the, at the stag, but I've never, like, the fact that like you can just see a gun in the shop. I held one when I was about 12, 13. Do you want to hear the worst thing I've ever done? Yeah. I made a girl shit herself one time. Uh, actually, shit her pants. I don't know. Because with me, dick. I'm not even messing. <laughs> I no pants on. We went to a friend's house and she he was cleaning herself. his gun, and it was out, like all apart. And there was a like just a, like a plastic tube nearby. And this girl was back to me, and I picked up the plastic tube and went freeze. <laughs> and because of the like, she'd seen the she pooed the gun. Pants. She assumed I'd just put a gun to the back of her head. Wow. And shit her pa- you know when you hear I mean the- from her point of view that is a fair assumption yeah and I mean, that was the moment though- I was like that prank has gone too far <laughs> <laughs> what, what when you was poo dribbling down the yeah, leg yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> she seems oh, pretty, she seems pretty tightly strong though doesn't she she's playing in a garage with a guy that's cleaning a gun and she's oh, like no, whoa wow. <laughs> well no this was in the <laughs> living room he was cleaning his gun in the living room. Yeah, he wasn't cleaning it. He'd been cleaning it, and it was still uh, yeah. hanging around. Just got my gun out in you, the living room. Yeah, we Come know around, you think this prank is going to be so funny. Yeah, and then it's not. And no. she actually pooed her pants. Actually, she her pants. Wow. And I agreed on principle not to tell anyone, so long as she didn't tell anyone. What was her name? What I had done. <laughs> <laughs> it's always healthy when you're doing that with high school yeah. girls, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Let's not tell anyone about this. We're just this was teaching. <sighs> Nearly said Have you ever <laughs> held a gun, Dan? Um, yeah, I went. We went in New Zealand. We went shot a shotgun for a bit. No, that's what I mean. I don't mean like a handgun. Like in, I can't believe you've never seen a gun shop. There's in Preston in North Preston. There's um like a cattle market because on the north side of Preston, there's loads of farms north of Preston, and it's not even that far out of town. It's near North End's ground. There is an old um where they do the cattle what's it called, like auction. Mm. Yeah, and there's a gun shop there, and I've been in that gun shop, and you're like. This is two and a half miles from where I grew up in suburban Preston. Is it all shotguns? And it's, it's just the most mental thing to see. You're like, how is, what is the security need to be like? Because in your head, guns are such an American thing. If you're a suburban kid or a city kid or whatever, but actually the whole of the agricultural community is like, yeah, of course you need a gun. Like, yeah, there, are, I mean, you, there are so many guns. Have you ever country. held one on the street though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because in suburban <laughs> Penwitham, I don't, sorry, sorry, I should have. Sorry, I should have. That's so sincerely yeah, as well. Because yeah. I don't. Know I have. Because I don't know if you know this about Hutton Grammar, just on the edge of uh, Preston. It was just gun crime was a big Are problem you all the, the time. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I finish choir practice and I was like, oh, I'm gonna shoot at least three choir boys just to get to my fucking mum's car. My mate's no, cousin. No, I've never. I've never. My mate's cousin Alan. Here we go. Gun. Here's the scout. What spot. kind of gun? A handgun. Like a pistol. Yeah, like a yeah. silver handgun. Yeah, on his, way, handgun. on his way to Beavers. Why though? He just had a gun. Didn't question this. It wasn't that abnormal. It is. It no. was. It yeah. was though. Yeah. Well, I, I, okay, maybe it was, but it wasn't for me where I grew up. Loads of people had guns. This was just the first one I got to touch. <laughs> I can't have it. I can't have it. To be fair, Dovecot isn't the cleanest of areas. It's yeah, probably. I get it. But he's like, wasn't that abnormal? One of my mates had a really big family and they were all like sort of... Scallies and his cousin had a gun and he let me hold it. He's right. like, yeah, I'd have a go with that. Was it loaded? I'd like to say yeah, but I don't know. Mud. How you old were you? About 12, 13. He was on his car. Was Imagine giving a 13 year old an unloaded or a loaded Imagine. Weapon. Unloaded. Yeah. Yeah. I was sat on my own crack. fence <laughs> holding it on outside the, my house. On the stoop. Did you point and go, oh. pow, pow. No, I just sort of held it quite sheepishly and then gave me back. And then rubbed off your prints. Yeah. Is it you knew? He's, he might have fucking sorted you out there, you know what I mean? Always wipe your prints off the gun. <laughs> yeah. He was showing us that he got it for Christmas. <laughs> Did he ask for it? 
Father Christmas won't bring you hang on. Silly. He got a gun for Christmas and I held it. I love it how you like, it wasn't abnormal. It was though, wasn't it? To you. You got a gun for Christmas. <laughs> to 12 year old yeah. Adam. Of his mum and dad. Do you want to see like my gun? Like Do you want to see my gun, Adam? <laughs> I'm bored of seeing them. It's Dovecot, early noughties. Can't move for fucking firearms. <laughs> And Kawasaki's that didn't exist. <laughs> he did have a motorbike. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he did, didn't he? He did, yeah. He had a gun, he had a motorbike. He had well. a gun and a motorbike. And he was 13. This section a year is older than me, sponsored by guns. <laughs> <laughs> but it's I've never, literally like we're trying to flog guns. Have you ever seen like an assault rifle in the wild? That's what I mean. Oh. I have, yeah, because it's open carry, Texas. You can have... An assault rifle? Yeah, yeah. You could go, like, the co-op with an assault rifle? Yeah, yeah. And no one goes, what are you doing? People have, like, signs saying, don't bring guns in here, but it's like masks in it. But, I mean, Texas like, is the most them, Texas is the most gun state, isn't it? They yeah, are yeah. The, the most open. There's n- literally no... Well, it's like, it's, it's the one country that's, like, the only, it's the only state where the flag can fly at the same level as the U.S. flag because it can be its own country because it used to be its own country. Right, yeah. And at any point, they can break away. Right, yeah. It's written into the not, Texas Constitution. Not every, not every state's open carry, though, is it? No, no, loads of them are normal right. and sensible. But in Texas, like, listen, you need a, a machine. Concealed <laughs> carry. Isn't that worse? Them, I think. What? Surely concealed's worse. Concealed's worse because you don't know who has it. Yeah. Concealed is hidden under your jacket or whatever. Yeah, but that's still less nerve-wracking than seeing a fucking man with an Uzi walking around Walmart, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And Do they, they tend to look, not look as nervous as the... Cops in the UK. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> do they have They're Uzis like, though? What? So you don't, they don't have Uzis. Do they you? can open carry. No, you can't. Have no, you can't you can't, no, you can't. You can't have a machine gun. Machine guns are just illegal. You can't have rapid fire. You can have a machine gun, but it has to be. Oh, but the, you have the, to pull the trigger the, every the, time. The uh, custom don't these at the end. Of, yeah, uh, so that yeah, yeah. So that's automatic. life in prison though, isn't it? Oh, if you make it automatic. If you have an auto, if you have a machine gun, that's pretty much life. If you yeah, if you uh, modify. Yeah, yeah, modify the guns. It's yeah. a felony. Modify in any way. Just for take yeah. off the serial number, like shave it when off. When was the first yeah. time you saw oh, no, it's five a machine years. gun? Five years, isn't it? Fourteen unregistered okay. firearm. I don't know. PGL. What? PGL. What's PGL? <laughs> this is what we went to on the end of primary school. Parents get lost. Don't bring your machine gun though. <laughs> machine. Yeah, gun. Yeah, but there's a tuck shop, and I've got no fucking money. <laughs> Good. Pack the machine gun. <laughs> Give me all your fucking sherbet dip dabs. Is that what it's stood for? Yeah, parents get lost. I can't remember what it's stood for. It's pro- no, it was proper good laugh. <laughs> Everyone went for a really good day. It sounded like it. it a, bit short, a bit short of machine guns. <laughs> we're, we're ready for the break here, aren't we? Yeah. People, people gun loads. Nailed it. <laughs> proper gun lover. <laughs> oh, God. Wag wag lids. Hope you're enjoying today's patron exclusive. We've got some new merch that you can see over my boobie. Is this real? This is an ad, this. Oh, for the merch. For the merch that you're wearing. Get one of these ones, but when you buy it, get one that fits you. <laughs> they come in different sizes, but I would definitely maybe order one size up, unless you want to feel like it's a Tammy Girl starter bra. Haveawordpod.com Have is where you get the merch com. from, and it'll save you wearing that pile of shite that you're wearing at uh, the minute. We just said, don't be doing the mean thing. You look like a fucking pedo. Get some merch, but he can't help himself. They just, but look at them. Look through the camera at the fucking scruffy twat on the other side of it. I like you. I think you look good. Fucking pathetic. But you'll look better in Have A Word Pod merch. That's, that's what I was saying, just in a more polite way. And that's here, because Carlo put the graphic in. Haveawordpod.com, if you can't read. Get on me. <laughs> well, um, what's being said just before we press record is, is <laughs> makes me giggle. It's usually naughty, isn't it? And Carl saying, let's bum its head in. Just got me off yeah. guard a little bit. Do it. But that's because I like and respect him. He's, just, in he's, the not, other he's not... What? <clears throat> what? Uh, come on, that's, you know... No, we had a good section there, so he's come out of his mood. Yeah. I, I'm still too sexually attracted to engage with that, but... I get it. Carl, you, you know, you're just... You, you okay know, now? You're a brother in pod. Thank you. A brother in pod. And sometimes you want to bum your brother's <clears> head in. <throat> uh, oh, I pressed the wrong button. Hey, <laughs> can we do speed round? Let's do it. Okay, let's do a speed round. Um, Jack Matchell says, all right, Lids, question for you all. What's up? What's up? 
Doesn't matter. Go on. Question <laughs> for you all. After watching Freddie Quinn kill it on Good Morning Britain, debating <laughs> if it's right if actors wear fat suits for roles, what topic would each of the lids, including Phil, like to debate on some garbage breakfast telly show? Um, first of all, Freddie Quinn on uh, Good Morning Britain was one of the weirdest optics I've ever had to engage in. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. I don't know how they booked it, how he got on there. I can't believe he was on a news programme and he hadn't murdered any women. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also... <laughs> that was the big surprise. Yeah. I woke up to tweets going, have you seen Freddie? He's on Good Morning Britain. And I was like, oh, how many of the they bodies have you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And it did. It was like, trying to get we're going to talk about. <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk about fat people. Here's uh, Preston Fat Cunt, Freddie Quinn. <laughs> well, they got him in to be the the fat guy who thinks fat people should shut up, didn't he? Yeah, he did a great job of it. Yeah, because yeah. he's a comic. Yeah, and she was right up his street. She was, yeah. and I mean this respectfully, big fat dum dum. She wasn't great, was she? I, I I didn't really listen to her. She wasn't good. I don't think you even watched her. I did. I watched the clip. It's hard to argue that. In it, what well, she was arguing. Water, please, is that possible? Sorry. Yeah. Yes. She was arguing you have to be a fat person. I get, it, I get it because TV producers go right. This is a thing. Let's get two people with opposing opinions. Hers was a bit lame. It, I know there's like that culture of like, well, you can't do this, and these people should be represented by these people, and I get it, but but that's how the British public gets so with fucking a, stupid now with a fat suit. Isn't because that they bring in some <clears throat> idiot that hasn't any fucking clue. And like, like if they're debating climate change, they'll get on like a scientist. Yeah. And then Novak748 from Twitter, <laughs> who's brought some memes. It's so funny though. <clears throat> and then I, they have to, uh, the smart scientist has to take apart this. Isn't yeah. that thing she like, oh, it should though, be one of, them, it? Like one of them people. Everyone can be fat. It's like, oh, don't have like, I don't know, like an Asian actor played by a white guy. Get that like in a, uh, like a poo. I honestly thought you were going to go, everyone can be Asian. <laughs> No, but you can't. That's the point. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah. Everyone can be fat. <clears throat> She's the fucking shut up. Eh? I didn't even listen to her, but it doesn't matter then. Her point is that it's hard to be fat and an actress and get leading roles. And that is one of the only leading roles in cinema. Do you know what it was, they were talking about? It was, it's Emma... What's her name? Thompson. Emma Thompson is As playing Miss, Miss Trunchbull, Trunchbull. Oh, yeah. In the new Matilda. So what they're saying is, that is a leading role in a movie. And there's so few of those opportunities for fat actors. They're always the fat mate, the, unf the, the funny friend, the sidekick. There's not very many opportunities for fat actors to actually play a leading role. So that should go to a fat person. What who makes you fat, though? Like, at what level are you fat? What? Well, like, it's on your CV. When I'm you start complaining actor. about it. Yeah. <laughs> when you start complaining about people saying stuff about fat people. Yeah, I'm a fat actor. I can't get, can't get that role. When you wake up out of breath. If you've ever woke up out of breath, <laughs> you, you can play Miss Trunchbull. <laughs> when you can't complete the scene as Miss Trunchbull because you're too fat, can you swing that kid around your head? <laughs> I'm fucking knackered. I'm when you dead can't, fat. can't get inside the chokey. <laughs> so, the is it a fat person or is it a thin person in a suit? It's, it's a thin it's person in a suit. Emma Thompson. Emma Thompson. Who, who cares? Cool. Fat people care. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Why? <laughs> Oh. Because I, fat I haven't watched it. Fat I haven't watched it because you can shut up. <laughs> fat people like to see themselves as like a minority. I've had to deal with it when I've That's made like saying, fat shaming know, jokes. Everybody like can be fat. What? Everybody can be fat. Yeah. What's that? How's that? They're not a minority, are they? But they want to be. Yeah, well, do you not? So yeah, that's the world we live in. Everyone wants to be a minority because if you're a minority now, you get given opportunities ahead of non minorities. So that's what they're trying to do. Like, there's been a wave of like, you know. People are arguing that if you're not black, you can't play black roles. If you're not gay, you pl can't play gay roles. Fat people are just like, well, we're not getting any, and we won't get involved. And it's it's literally just that. Yeah, and that's essentially it. what Freddie did. I, I understand where she's coming from. I also just think it's a bit silly, and actors should be allowed to do whatever they want. Is there an Andrew Tate of fat people? <laughs> I think that's Freddie. It's Freddie. Freddie. People it is Freddie. Freddie. <laughs> <laughs> that's Freddie. Can you fat up then for the role? Why? Like, do you know what we like? Oh, Christian um, Bale's Christian done it. Christian Bale, yeah. yeah. He does it. He changes his way for roles. Yeah, I know. Fucking shut up. I want oh, a God. real smackhead. Uh, this, <laughs> this, is, this is becoming a trope. Towards the end of the day, <laughs> Carl just loses patience. He's like, fucking shut up. Next question. <laughs> this is from Steve. What a fucking stupid name. Um, Stephen Elliott says, would you rather have to have Jamie Hutchinson perform all of your foreplay for you or have to perform all of his foreplay 
for whatever nan he's pulled. Speed round. I would... So easy. I hate foreplay. I'd let him do it. What? You hate foreplay? Yeah. You don't like getting sucked off? Oh, yeah, I like getting the <laughs> foreplay. I thought you meant do the foreplay on someone else. I'm like, yeah, yeah I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Can you ask him a question? A <laughs> do you like eating pussy? Yeah. <laughs> no? Yeah. Yes, that's a lot of people, by the way. It would be quite something. I don't like eating much, that's why I'm. Oh, I, thin. Oh, yeah, yeah, I love yeah. it, me. Yeah. And also, it would be pretty <laughs> off putting, you know, as you go to bed, you're like, I'm going to give my missus the good scene, too. Yeah. And you know, Jamie Hutchinson is waiting <laughs> on the landing. <laughs> yeah, <but laughs> I, She's fart. Uh, I'd like, give him walk on music up. and everything. <laughs> playing Can the girl Playing refuse? Foxy Bingo, losing his rent. <laughs> Does, oh, the girl out. can surely refuse to be like, I'm not having him play with me pussy and then have you come and finish the job. So could the granny, I suppose. Yeah. She could. I don't think. I think if the granny's going to with Jamie, she'd be quite happy <laughs> to have me do a bit of the work. Yeah, I think Laura's. Yeah, I don't know if she'd be dead happy with it. No. I'd be like, lo love it, so would you rather? And they're all powerful. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I don't care. He's, he's really good he's on the pod. Of, he's <laughs> really good on the pod. He's one of the best podcast storytellers in the game. She's like, yeah, he's not. Oops. not <laughs> <laughs> he said it out loud. And he's not went, you, Dan. <laughs> um, yeah. Are you what are you going for? I'll fuck the man. Was that one of the options? <laughs> it's all grim, isn't it? Yeah. It's all Jamie naked. Oh, he's, I don't want to. I've seen it. Have no. you? Yeah, Berlin. You've seen Jamie Hutchinson's penis? I've seen Jamie Hutchinson's penis. We, we were in Probably Berlin. Probably got a photo of it somewhere. Berlin. When? He was up on a bin naked. At we one were point. there? We yeah, no, me, it. him and Callum disappeared for a while. and went to some weird German bar. And found a bin. And found a bin outside. <laughs> and they got naked. He got naked on top of the bin. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> pants. He wasn't naked. He was just pants around his ankles. And oh. <laughs> <laughs> proper Brits abroad. <laughs> no, that's not proper Brits abroad. That's Jamie Hutchinson <laughs> in Berlin. Classic Brits that's abroad. That's Jamie Hutchinson on a Tuesday. On their underpants. In their underpants on a bin. How was Berlin? Who was that for? Was that Paul Smith? Paul Smith. Paul Smith. Paul Smith. Paul Smith. Paul Smith. Paul Yeah. It was terrible. What? It was. Paul Blair thought Oktoberfest was a gazebo outside Primark, and I'm not even messing with you. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had to pay a two euro deposit for a glass. For the glass, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Oktoberfest. You made the most of it, though. Yeah, laugh. we had a good. Yeah, that was Irish a... bar that night was great. And there was a mass evacuation of the hotel. That was pure luck. The... Total luck. That yeah. it was like Berlin Wall Day or whatever. Who was, the, who, was, who was MVP of that stag? Jamie? No, Jamie I reckon it was probably. Uh, say MVP. Of, you mean there's someone who gets the most fucked up? No, no. Who was the one that you like? They were great value the whole the whole. Trip. I, I honestly think it came down to me and Phil sorting everything else because Paul yeah. Blair was meant to play at that time. Me and Paul Blair were both Paul Smith's best man, but we were like, look, let's not both try and organise a stag do. Let's. Yeah, okay. And Paul Blair had done it before, so I was like, you just do it, and then don't want too many cooks. But then he got so fucked he couldn't do anything, and it was essentially and me and you. He concentrated on the pranks, didn't he? Yeah, which like was we'd, we'd He bought him like a pair of yeah, we've told swimming shorts. Yeah. yeah, That disappeared. Yeah. And he was like, we need to um, do a public swimming pool. So anyone open it seven miles away. <laughs> we need five taxis. And we were yeah. like, it's and then not we worth it. And Paul, Smith, his Paul Smith knew the joke. Yeah. yeah, and then we tried to go in the Radisson. Yeah, so we tried to go in the Radisson. It was like, can we all use the swimming pool? And they were like, I'm sorry, no, we don't let any strangers into the pool after the stank. Yeah. <laughs> the swimming pool is for my husband. <laughs> Um, uh, right just him in the pool yeah. and obviously stag dude just gone earlier in the year <laughs> where you all ran up to Falkirk that was great yeah that I mean was it was chaos and Phil nearly Phil died <laughs> well, nearly lost yeah. a leg <laughs> yeah practically have but yeah how oh, was your leg mate so yeah yeah he cracked so it against the wall you cracked it against the wall and against dislocated the, your kneecap broke your kneecap against a a, uh, like a jagged edge wasn't it? it was a rock mm. it was a piece of the castle like, the woman in the NHS didn't give a fuck when I got there. Like, after you dropped me off, yeah, we know. I was tripping yeah. on Tramadol. Which... Yeah, we shouldn't have given you Tramadol before we took you to any. No, no, we shouldn't. They, we they, they drove that home, really, quite heavy <laughs> as well. Yeah. <laughs> we, we gave them Tramadol they at actually... midnight and then left them in Scotland and went home. Yeah. They actually Just gave me more... It. They were more concerned about the drugs I'd taken than the actual knee. Yeah, because this is Scotland. They've, they've, they've fucking, what looks like a drug addict with a bad leg has just been dropped off at <laughs> A&E. By two scousers. Oh, <laughs> See you later, <laughs> Take care of him, please, love. Oh, nice. Fucked his knee. Anyway, it was like to West Arby. train spotting where he overdoses and they just dragged me out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you yeah, went... Money in the pocket. You're, we, we said you're quite a self-assured person. You regressed. 
yeah, that, yeah. in that moment. Oh, you went see You were in total shock, and I got really, really aggy with Milo McCabe. Yeah. Because, like, Milo was off his absolute head on pills and everything. And they were all like, right, Phil needs to be taken to Liverpool. And I was like, right, well, I'm the only one driving to Liverpool right now. And if Phil... If we're going to make it to Liverpool, fine. Phil is more than welcome to come with us. But I think me and Carl are going to end up stopping halfway and staying over in like Lancaster or something, which we did end up doing because we just couldn't keep our eyes open. Right, yeah, yeah. And I was also like, also, if we get halfway home and you start passing out from your knee and you need to go to hospital, then I've got to leave you in Lancaster and then none of these. So would it not be better for me to take you to the, ho- the hospital around the corner? And my little McCabe was like, he has said he wants to go home. So take him home. So, so you're in a bit of shock and you're like, I'm I could shock. do to go. To, but you've got a pretty bad leg injury. Yeah. It's not traditional to then do a five hour drive home, is it? No, Nobody no, but it did seem easier home. than going to the yeah. emergency room in Scotland. But also when you're in shock and there's 19 lads, half of whom are on MDMA. Yeah. Well, I say telling you, you what to do. The only like, two people who weren't on MDMA were me and Carl. Yeah. But when yeah, I say yeah. you regressed, you were sat there like, uh, this is no offense, like a little kid going, just I felt help. like a little just, kid. Just, I was help. Like, I, just help. Someone just do something. Yeah, you're like, <laughs> yeah. please help Was it, help was it me. hurting at this point? Or oh, did yeah, you yeah. realise oh, it? Oh, right, okay. Like, I knew as soon as I... I was like, that was not... That did you just trip and good. fall and hit, the, hit your No, knee? like, you went, went around the corner and they could see the car and there was the light on in the car, but there's no light in the car park. And I went naturally to go straight towards the Walking. car, and but I should have walked around the rock. Oh. And it was, like, covered in algae. So it was just... So as soon as I stepped, normally it just went... Straight into the thing, and I was like, "That is the most pain I've ever felt." Yeah. And then just got up and was like, "Put the beer no, in the car no, as well." You, like no, you came. Trooper. You came up to me at the car, and any matter of fact, went, "Ah, I've just fucking destroyed me knee," you know. Yeah. And I went, "All oh, right, are you okay?" And you went, "No, not at all." Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, "Right, you see him okay?" And you're like, "No, I'm in screaming agony." Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like, Let's no, get you no, in, Carl. It's the worst pain I've ever felt in me. Let's like. literally what he was like, and then he sat down. I was like. So we was gonna help, and then you yes, take I medical advice from a fucking character comedian that's done ketamine in the last four years. I, 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 yeah. I had to apologise to Milo because I lot because he was he couldn't see the point I was trying to make. Like I'm not going to get Phil to Liverpool. I'm going to end up dropping him at a hospital in the Lake District, which is the worst possible scenario. And he was like, "But he wants to go home." I was like, "You're not understanding. I'm exhausted now, and I'm not going to be." And he's like, "You're not listening to Phil." And I was like, "Milo." Shut the fuck up and proper. You know, you know it's very rare for me to lose me rag, but when I do, I can be a bit like, "You should all do me fucking head in. Shut up. This is the right thing to do." It very, very rarely happens, and cause he just couldn't see what I was trying to say. It really, really fucked me up. And then someone went, "Give him tramadol," and I went, "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> me and Adam were like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> as, yeah, a, as a dangerous tactic to need like <laughs> medicating at, isn't it? Let's just put everyone put one drug in this pint glass, <laughs> yeah. mix it up. That was the first. Chug, like, chug, Phil chug, can float chug. home. Right. I did though. The tramadol is. Once I took that, I was like, I can never do that is again. Tramadol just a painkiller. It's like. Opiates, legal isn't heroin, it? innit? Yeah, it's opiates, yeah. Legal it's, heroin. Yeah, it's like pharmaceutical grade. Right. And it's incredible. Yeah, I have like, to say. Like, I was in the hospital going, I should After do 14 morphine. hours of Laura being in labour, when they gave her diamorphine, it really got interesting pretty quick. She was like, <laughs> 20 minutes later. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't think I'm in labour anymore. I was like, you are, babe. <laughs> you're, you're definitely on smack. <laughs> you're on chemical grade smack. She was like, Anymore, <laughs> oh, my mouth is dry. <laughs> Amazing. The smack like I'm, mouth dry. I'm not. I'm not saying do heroin, but I just I watch a woman go from 14 hours of what looked like pretty. Well, she was whinging a lot, excruciating pain <laughs> to golden brown texture like sunshine. Mm, look great. So if it tramadol's is, anywhere think, near that, I think that's probably probably why they didn't take me quite so seriously. While I was like laughing in her face about what had happened. <laughs> <laughs> My knees fucking. She was taking the piss as well though. Right. She was like on the phone going, we've got a fella here's banged his knee. And I was like, when you say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> I said a wee booby. <laughs> and now he's on smack. <laughs> like he's smack fucking off stuff. his tits. <laughs> he's hurt his fucking leg. <laughs> Two scousers dropped him off and they've drove off in a Range Rover. Don't know what to tell you. Is that Head too off? nice on Love Island? <laughs> <What? laughs> Too neat. <laughs> Phil has banged his knee. <laughs> ah, Adam doesn't he want to risk a five hour drive <laughs> my love is being annoying <laughs> then you got to select your partner and Jamie Hutchinson comes and sucks him off for you <laughs> oh, 
Oh, was that the question we're doing now? Oh, yeah, shit. That speed round. <laughs> <laughs> Stretches, 15 minutes to Brett come. Phillips says, following Adam's trip to the zoo a while ago, wanted to get I a sense of everyone's survival plan. <laughs> I want, Brett wants to get a sense of it, guys, so buckle in. The music's still playing. You can pick, you can pick one animal, uh, sorry, you can pick one animal enclosure to protect you at the zoo, but every other animal in the zoo is coming to kill you. What are you picking? No, quant uh, quantity of animal in the zoo is also a factor. So... You went to Chester Zoo. Let's say it's Chester Zoo. I went for, yeah, I went to Chester Zoo. Had a nice recently. time. Lovely. If you are to be put in, now, the animal enclosure you choose, even if they're like carnivorous eating people, they don't for the game. Oh. So, which enclosure will you choose to defend you? So, like, if I chose lion, they don't eat me for the game? Yeah, they're like, yeah, you're sound. You're one of the pack. I, I will go out and lion say, pack? although this sort of ruins the question Pride. immediately. Right. I would say death is certain regardless of who you pick. Do you know no. what I mean? Pick a waterborne animal. So I'll drown. No. If you, you can swim. If you pick the penguins. <laughs> if you pick a penguin. Yeah. You need your head check in. It, just pick the enclosure <laughs> with water. Right. All the animals are like, fuck that. Yeah. So the, the lions aren't jumping in and killing you. <laughs> Lions love going for a swim. Love. Off the west coast of South Africa, you come up against a six foot tuna, no chance, mate. So uh, you, Adam is in the middle, in the middle of the penguin enclosure, surrounded by fucking happy feet, and elephants and lions are coming to kill him. You're like, yeah, well, that's a that's about two feet of water there. No, you pick the deepest water one. Is there any deep water? Killer whale. I reckon I'm going in the back cave. You know, right. said Robin. <laughs> All right, Bruce. I reckon the back cave is the place to go because it's dark, right? <laughs> and the bats are going to try and protect me, so the lions might be coming. But like, I don't care who you are and how hard you are. If a bat comes flying round your head, you're uncomfortable. <laughs> Stouse Batman over here. Listen, I know lions. I know lions. I saw my first gun at twelve, and it wasn't abnormal. I saw my first lion at fourteen, and he had a gun. Dove car, two thousand and six. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Like a lion's going to go, ah, I'm going to kill that fucker. Ah, for bat, bat. bat. Fly past its eyes like that, though. See? Exactly. No, that You're was a you. grown man and you that shit was you, yourself. That was you nearly Some pussy hitting ass me. lion in Chester Zoo who's never even seen the streets. <laughs> you had a gun in the street. A Cheshire lion. <laughs> yeah. Fucking saft ass fucking lion. Like a Tory lion. A wool lion. Yeah. A wool lion. Monkeys. What about them? They'd be good. They'd swing it up in the trees. Nothing can get you. Monkey, monkeys or gorillas was going to be my first choice, and I thought about it. I think it's bats, you know. It's dark in there as well. You start in the corner. Lad, lad, I'm going the elephants. Come on. No, because yeah. the lions just eat the elephant's legs. No. Lions yeah, they get confused and they get to Don and Kebab. My fucking... <laughs> gets confused because it knows what Don and Kebabs are. Not Don and Kebab. Honestly, it's an elephant, mate. The amount, the amount of... Elephants that die each each year in the wild because some dude from a takeaway is like, oh, you want done the meat? Oh, sorry, fucking hell. This is, sorry, this mate. Is sorry, mate. Elephant leg, innit? I don't know what I'm doing here. I work in Abdul's. <laughs> Should probably stop now. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. Why I think it? elephants is a bad shot because you can chop them down to legs so easy. Who? Lions. Lions can chop down a herd of elephants. If a, Lions a herd eat of elephants for breakfast, don't they? Oh, yeah. Every no. morning. No. <laughs> yes, they do. No, they don't. Yes, they do. No, they don't. Lions. The eagles that get you. <laughs> Fire podcasting. <laughs> yes, they do. No, they don't. <laughs> they do, though. Animate it. They do, they though. They do do that, there. Don't do, hey. though. <laughs> don't do, though. Right. Lions eat elephants. Phil, back me up here. In the Serengeti. I, I, in right. This, I, they, they may you're asking take down no. an old, <laughs> Not a Serengeti, old, an old elephant. Well, yeah. I'm talking a young, fit pride. I don't know why I'm pride. A herd of elephants. Big cocks. A, a fucking lion turning up. Just stomp them motherfuckers. Yeah, well, there's more lions than elephants in the zoo. Yeah. Oh, there's a there's a few elephants in in uh, Chester Zoo. Yeah, but there's elephants. also With monkeys elephants. and all that coming for you. Like while it's trying to stomp a fucking lion, out, there's a monkey there fucking yanking on its tail. What about the Doing eagles? Its Dan? What about the eagles in the air? Yeah, plucking it. its eyes out. No matter which animal we pick here, by the way, we're absolutely fucking. Not if you did in the water. I think. Yeah. Yeah, but it would be more funny if you died surrounded by penguins. I reckon that would definitely... So what animal are you picking? The penguins? I'm picking the waterborne ones. The penguins? Are they the only waterborne zoo animals? Pretty much. I'm Carl, have you never been to a zoo? And the elephant will then get in the water? 
Oh, and how slow is the elephant going to be in the water? Can swim. So can I. Elephants can swim. So can I. I know that. Not quicker than me. They haven't got knees. I think we should set up an elephant race. Swimming. <laughs> what? <laughs> Say that again. Elephants haven't got knees. <laughs> what? Is it just me? Or has he been on mental form today? <laughs> Google off. Is the television on? No. Let's turn the television on. They have got knees. Elephants don't have knees. <laughs> Carl, that is... have you ever been to a zoo in your life? Have you ever seen an elephant? Oh, do you have no knees? <laughs> <laughs> hang on. Ruby, ruby, ru. Elephants in their most of four. I can't. Oh, hang face on. Face. on. Wait, let me read that sentence. No, uh, no, sorry. Elephants are the only other animals to have knees. I've got it mixed up. No. Dogs haven't got knees. Yes, they have. Read it. Elephants are the only animal to have four forward facing knees. All other four legged animals have at least one pair of legs with their knees that face backwards. Right. And I knew there was a knee fuck? fact. Does that mean? I knew there was a knee fact with elephants in my head. The leg goes back. So every other animal has legs like that and legs like that. Horses. <laughs> Horses. I'm not even joking. Horses. Horses, what? Have backward facing knees on the back. Yeah. And dogs. Horses' legs face the other way. And dogs do too. Yeah. Do you think dogs' legs all face the same way? Think about it. Think You're about it. You're thinking of the Boston Dynamics robot. Look at his head. Can you just Google dogs. dog? Yeah. Dog knee. Dog legs. Dog legs. There you go. They face the other way. Get that picture up. The front ones face backwards. Yeah, dogs' legs face. Look. See? Oh my good God. I knew there was a knee fact with elephants. I thought they didn't have any, but they've only got four facing ones. Sorry. I've got an elephant fact in me. Do you know what? It's so fun when we. Elephants don't have knees. Oh, sorry. They have four. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I meant. Oh, they've got loads of knees. I knew there was an elephant knee fact. Does that change the hiding with the elephants, though? Now you know about the knee sitch. I, I, I think Adam's got a point. You probably fuck, but I'm just going for this. I'm going off Chester Zoo because quantity is a fact. There's quite a lot of elephants. They're massive and they can stomp things. Where you else? Can stomp where th monkeys in the trees. Where else you go? And I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying it, that none of it's a great bet. No. I think my elephants are my best shot. I'd hide with the mice because the mice would scare I the elephants. The, I love the mice in the zoo. Yeah, the oh, mice yeah. in the zoo. The, yeah. the famous Chester mice. <laughs> yeah, biker yeah. mice. Fucking discount bit of the fucking zoo. <laughs> I mean, like, can you see the, the mice? I've been to a zoo in Middlesbrough where there was mice. Oh, no. The <laughs> pet shop film? The, t the Teesside Zoo. I think and, it was, yeah. It's <laughs> mice, hamsters, gerbils. Here's a dog with no knees. <laughs> He's got no legs. <laughs> Old stummy. I think you need to be out the way, either in the water or in the trees. So monkeys or penguins. I'm, I'm sticking with bats, but I'm telling you right now, we're fucking no matter what happens. Speed round. Speed round. Scott Harkup says, Lids to Scotty. Scotty. Scott oh, Harkup. Harkers. <claps> Never heard of this cunt. <laughs> there he is. Roughing it. <laughs> oh my God, they've mentioned me on Spotify. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, quest two questions. If Have a Word was to be offered uh, to do CBB's bedtime story, <laughs> would you do it? And uh, follow up question <laughs> who would be best at it? You'd do it once. Keep it up, Luke. <laughs> I would like to nominate myself. Yeah. We do it once and then go to jail. As long as Play you can do it, you can do it. As so long we're as doing we... a CBB's bedtime story. You've got to nominate if it is. Oh, okay. To read the story? To read yeah, yeah, the yeah. story. I See, I reckon Finn would be quite good at reading Me, we the don't, story. We Think don't give read. him a mic for a reason. Uh, Finn can read, though. He, you are right. He can only read Welsh. Because he's got a soft speaker. Yeah. voice. But then if you've got to go with one of you threes. I'd probably Adam in it. Adam. Uh, as Adam can read it as long as we get to choose the accent. And I get Oof. to choose the content. Okay. Yeah, so you get to choose story. So what story would you like Adam to the read? The time traveling lesbian. The time traveling lesbian, that famous children's <laughs> bedtime story. Yeah, it will be when we tell <laughs> it. <laughs> I'm sick of her asking for it. <laughs> I'm like, come on, let's- So we've got the time traveling lesbian. And what? <laughs> she reads something else, babe. She's like, no, daddy. The time traveling lesbian. She claps lesbian. her vagina what? three I'm times. Not oh. I'm not accent. <laughs> What did you say? She claps her vagina three times. <laughs> <laughs> Heads off into the past. There's no place like 
home oh. first. And once, uh, and, and what Bridge. accent? Fuck. What accent you want? Um, <laughs> are you gonna riff the time traveling lesbian? Yes. <laughs> Great. French. <laughs> French? No, he's, you don't he's get too. To pick it. You've picked the content. Oh, he's too. I really love whenever you do your slightly offended gay German. This is for my husband. Okay. <laughs> the so th- th- this program started. It's like la 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 la. Okay. And you're sat there uh, hang on. I'll, I'll do the narration. Okay. Now, uh, now it's uh, time for the bedtime story on CBBS, read out by comedian and podcaster. And international gigolo, Adam Rowe. It's okay, there's a gentleman in the bed piece. <laughs> I, I want to say, if you're the producer, you just realise you're losing your job. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the bad Okay. <clears throat> What's the name of the book? This week's story is called <laughs> The Time Travelling Lensbian by Quentin Black. Lensbian? <laughs> <laughs> He's a, She's doing the best. He's, he's an German. illustrator. Oh. He's an illustrator. He is, he is, he is <laughs> branching out into writing his own books now because Rolf Dahl is dead. Uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is shit. Time traveling lesbians. Lesbians. Like <laughs> there was once a time traveling lesbian. <laughs> Straight on the money, and they don't fuck around. Time travel lesbians. Roll credits. Ironically, they're on the cro- on the clock on the clock. Hey, I said there was once a time traveling lesbian, but due to her time traveling abilities, there was always a time traveling <laughs> lesbian. She could travel to any period of time apart from Ooh. from 1936 to 1945, because that period of time we don't like to talk about. <laughs> Oh, she's, oh, she's a Holocaust denying lesbian. The, the lesbian was also a Jew because we like them. <laughs> well, I was a bit worried this story is going to be contentious. Yeah. Hang on, is that in the story or is she like fluffing on the outside? Is that written down? I'm reading from the pages. We like them. <laughs> That's in the story. I think, I think this she is has really been given some artistic license. Okay. To fluff yeah. it. I think this is going to affect Quentin Blake's reputation. <laughs> I get a problem with lesbians. The lesbian dancers. wanted some ice cream. So she was. <laughs> so she time traveled. She time traveled to the summertime where it was more. <laughs> she could have gotten the co op, but she's a pretty stupid Jewish lesbian time traveler. She, she didn't want people to be looking at her thing. Why is that time traveling lesbian drink having the ice cream in the winter? It's too cold. So she moved to July. <laughs> Where everybody was having ice cream, apart from one lonely little boy. She goes up to the boy and says, would you like to have some ice cream too? I will buy you one. And he says, are you flirting with me? She says, no, for I am a time traveling lesbian. I've got no interest in your cock. I like the pussy. The little boy. And she's not the pedophile. She is also only 12 years old, oh. but she already knows so much about who she is as a woman. <laughs> she knows her love language. Could you imagine if you gave someone a fucking time machine and you went, when do you want to go to? And they're like, July? Because I don't want to look like a twat eating ice cream. I mean, I am a 12 year old lesbian, but I don't want to be persecuted anymore. <laughs> The little boy, he accepted her invitation. Turns out he was an orphan and they become best friends and she shared his time time she shared her time traveling abilities with the little boy. His name was Joshua. Joshua and the time traveling lesbian who has yet to be given a name. Let's call her Julie. Julie and Joshua became best friends and they travel all around the time, eating whatever they want <laughs> in appropriate boy. seasons. The end of episode one. Yeah. Let's hope episode two is going back to when Joshua lost yeah. his parents. <laughs> <laughs> Joshua's constantly, maybe that's the running bit with the time traveling lesbian. Can we go and save my parents now? No! I want ice cream in every possible season! Um, this should be a model to kids' stories to yeah. teach them a lesson. Shouldn't well, it be more of a serial as well? Yeah. So it would be like the time traveling lesbian and. The lesson in oh, that is yeah. that boys and girls can be friends without the uh, underlying pressure to fuck. Even if one's a 12 year old lesbian. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you've really got to read between the lines on. <laughs> You know, some of the Jewish ice cream eating <laughs> and time traveling. I think they'd so shy away from the Jewish references. Yeah, why is she Jewish for <laughs> no reason? <laughs> Just so that the German looks okay with it, because, you know, they've got history. Julia, the Jewish time traveling husband. <laughs> and Joshua, the orphan. 
Ladies and gents, <laughs> oh, yeah, Jane, I'm that? telling you right now, that's the end of the speed round. <laughs> come, on, come on, Phil Chapman, ladies and gents. <laughs> Phil Chapman, who just by close proximity helped create the time trap with lesbian that I won't forget for a long time. <laughs> Uh, where can we that's again animation I want to see the, yeah. animation of that <laughs> wow yeah. wow <laughs> when, uh, where can we find you Phil you can find me on Instagram Twitter Facebook uh, at I am Phil Chapman and uh, I've got a work in progress uh, gone on sale for March the 8th right. in hot water great which is Phil's, for sale Phil's absolutely brilliant and his online stuff is superb go and follow him on socials <sighs> I, uh, I put some work in progress shows on sale last week Adam Rowe and Friends uh, the tickets are listed on adamrow.co.uk forward slash shows uh, most of them sold out pretty much straight away so I added some standing tickets for Liverpool there's not many of them left either and both of the London dates are already sold out people have asked me like to bring this idea to like Birmingham and Newcastle and Manchester and stuff I might do but I don't really like travelling to do new stuff I like just doing it where I can walk it from me I was the two London dates are because I'm going to be in London for other stuff anyway um, hence uh, putting them in so I might do but you might just have to wait until I'm on tour next year or at a comedy club near you or whatever because... Yeah, people have asked that with my previews. They're like, are you not coming down south? You're like, no, it's the the, the previews. Are go- work in progress and previews are going to be near where you live, aren't they? Yeah. And then next I'm gonna year... I'm going to travel all the way to Birmingham to find out that new yeah. idea is shit. We're not adding any new towns or cities to my tour. So if you're in Bristol and you're asking, I know you've asked before, but Cardiff is your closest bet. Um, appreciate you, Phil. Thanks so much. Um, Julia. That was so uh, good. Finley, don't have any music for yeah. all of the people that listen to us. Yeah, the Christians, the Hindus, and the Jews, all welcome to listen to this. As long as it's on the audio, we don't put it on to YouTube. Uh, this week, we've got... Um... <laughs> Should we do it? No? Oh, okay. I told you he was going to name Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can told you. Finley, uh, cool, but love. No, keep doing it. You're making me frisky. All right. Okay, this week no, is... No, All right, they want respect. All right, fine. Fine, Carl. Oh, God. Uh, this week, uh, the the person that sent a song in is John, who is the sound tech and engineer at Hot Water. I know everyone. John Riley? Yeah, John everyone, Riley. everyone. Oh, yeah, I've seen his him. band videos on there uh, online. So, yeah, really his good. band are called The Glass Skies, and the tune they've sent in is called Sirens. So, go and check that out um, wherever you get your music. I feel the same for you, sure. <laughs> <laughs>